Yo, what's up, man? Uh, you see Gronk got traded? Yeah, man. It's absolutely wild. Uh, like, he's going to be... Coming back from retirement, yeah, buddy. He's going to have to play uh, football and do WWE at the same time. So he's going to have to run out of the uh, stadium and go and put his championship belt on from, uh, you know, whatever he's going to be doing in the WWE. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, Stone Cold will let him borrow the uh, beer truck, take it down to Tampa with him or something, you know? Let him let him parade it around at the tailgate. Did you see uh, Brady was playing um, football out in a park? Or I don't know if he was playing football or he was working oh, out. Oh, no, no, he was working. Yeah, no, yeah. I saw that. He was working out on the playground yeah, and they, equipment. And, like, go and all the parks are closed. <laughs> I'm like, yo, dude, you're good, man. Just gotta keep playing. <laughs> They gave him a citation from what I heard. Yeah. Like he probably saw it as like a probably like a hundred dollar citation or something. He's like, yeah. Well the mayor I think the mayor reached out. Wiped his ass with it and moved on. What? <laughs> yeah. It's funny. He reaches out to like the guy with the hundred dollar citation that wouldn't blink twice about paying it, but everybody else that could barely yeah. pay it, he's like, Yeah, they yeah. could pay it. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> You're here to play football though. You pay no citation oh, that's how now. That goes. The rich get richer. So <laughs> Yeah. It's a vicious cycle. Absolutely. But yeah, dude, I'm, I'm glad to see Gronk's coming back. Um, do you think he's going to do good? Like, or do you think like the year layoff is going to hurt? No, him? I think the, if, if anything, a year layoff will help him. Uh, but just like, cause his only issue was staying healthy. If you remember, he would walk around with that Megatron arm, yeah. like just a big old like cat. Oh yeah. I, I, and that's why he <laughs> no longer playing football. He just would get beat up. He's not old. Um, he's much younger than Brady is, but mm -hmm. that position puts a toll on you. So I, I'd like to see him play for at least two, three years. Um, honestly, I think mm -hmm. that he wanted to just do whatever he wanted for a year and then he's going to come back and he's going to miss football and he'll play for a couple of years and then get out. But like, um, mm -hmm. he, his problem was always staying healthy, man. Like he, he couldn't string a couple of games together without like falling, like, Oh, you know, I got a finger hurt. Oh, I got yeah. his arm is. I got, I got to get surgery on whatever. And I don't know, man, it, it's a tough game. And with his style of play, man, that's, that's, it, yeah. It's like, you know, uh, uh, I think, I think he makes an impact. Absolutely. Uh, I kind of feel bad for OJ Howard just cause like he's an up and coming tight end, but OJ Howard has the same problem mm -hmm. that Gronk does. He can't stay healthy. So, uh, I, yeah, I, I first see some moves happening maybe with OJ Howard at this draft or, or in a later time period, um, it really just depends on like if they think Gronk's going to be more of a long term, like a couple years. Um, right now, I know he just signed a yeah. one year, ten million dollars. I imagine Gronk would just play until Brady is done, and so. Yeah, and I honestly, I don't, I don't think he's going to be getting like OJ Howard should be fine. I think I don't think like Gronk's going to be seeing the type of time that he saw up in New England. Like he's still good, but like he said, he gets hurt, so they're gonna kind of put him on like a little bit of a snap restraint probably not have him in every damn play um so i think it'd be good but yeah speaking of the draft that's coming up uh everybody stay tuned later on in the episode um aj and i are going to be doing our mock draft through the first round um so y'all stay tuned for that um but yeah man in the meantime dude uh have you uh you guys catch up on that last dance yet did you watch that with uh, Michael Jordan. Oh, absolutely, man! I've I've been waiting on all ESPN. freaking as soon as I as soon as they moved the date up on it because I think they're originally going to release it in the summer. Uh, I think they were going to release it in like uh -huh. July or something after the finals. Um, as soon as they that came out, I was so pumped. I was like, let's do this. Um, I think that it didn't disappoint. Like the a couple of stats that came from the ratings, um, they're like six point one. Uh, was the rating obviously for households, um, which is which is I think their best rating they've ever had for a documentary for ESPN specifically, but that doesn't include all the people that recorded mm. it. Um, it doesn't include uh, all the people that are going to watch it on Netflix as well. So um, I think that it was. Is it on? Yeah, Netflix? it's a Netflix ESPN uh, split series. So like they oh, they both cool. funded it. Um, so the two episodes got released at midnight after it was, after it was live, f uh, fed on ESPN. Oh, okay. So, um, cool. I think it'll be, 
Dude, I enjoyed it. Man. I think by the end of it, we'll see it as it'll be more successful than the OJ, the OJ series, which that was super successful. Um, I just think that people love Michael Jordan and that age group that watched him play. They, uh, I think they miss it. You know what I mean? Because there hasn't been a lot of conversation lately about Michael Jordan the past couple of years. He's kind of been out of the limelight, and mm-hmm. people, I think people love watching him, and myself included. I just He's such a captivating figure. He's different than LeBron in the way that, you know, just his attitude. And um, he was more like a Kobe in that attitude. But then, you know, he was elevated just a little bit above Kobe. Um, Just the drama and, you know, retiring twice and all that is just so, so captivating. And and then being like the most successful um, sports, like, or uh, most successful athlete when it comes to business ever, creating, literally creating his own brand that's, jumps off of Nike, but it's more popular than the Nike brand. You know what I mean? So it's just like, uh, it blows mm-hmm. my mind. <laughs> so. Yeah, dude, it, it was so fun to like watch the documentary. It's, it's funny too, because we've been talking lately a little bit about like these hypotheticals, like old school, new school, you know, who's going to win in the three on three. I think we talked about it in the last episode. Um, but like we were talking about how, I think that I was saying like the new you were you were sticking to your guns about the old school and then I was sitting here preaching the new school and kind of watching this documentary I'm kind of wondering I'm like man like I may I may want to I don't know if I want to recant that from last oh. last episode or not because just watching it man I I don't think I'm going to but it was just is so much more physical like play so much more de- it just it was a completely different game I still well, it was just some of the some of the things like some of the things he had to deal with like from other defenses just trying to keep him from getting to the yeah. basket, just getting Small. you know obliterated by, by Bill and Beer down go. low it was just nuts. And then he still would like yeah, make the around. shot and get like an and one cool. like it was <laughs> it, I, just yeah. This was like a great uh, kind of like a great like hey dude I'm still here I'm yeah. still you know greatest of all time like don't forget like I'm right here watch Whoa. the documentary. Watch well, it, yeah. Read and weep. And even like, uh, <laughs> even even LeBron acknowledges it. Like, you know what I mean? Like when he tweeted, he was like, mm-hmm. he he was talking about, it. and all the players that were watching, they tweeted about it, and they were like, man, like Jordan was different, you know. And then like, Jordan has a sixty-three point game in the playoffs, and they still lost because Larry Bird. <laughs> Was there, you know, like the, the, the Celtics hit that last shot mm-hmm. with Danny Ainge and Larry Bird and, and all those dudes that they, they had the last shot. And Larry Bird said that yeah. wasn't Michael Jordan playing. That was God disguised as Michael Jordan. It was pretty high praise. I wouldn't. It, it's crazy that he scores 63 points in a game and still lost. I'd be yeah, pissed. Yeah. I'd be so mad. <laughs> Like well, I, he didn't. Um, he was he was young and um, he didn't have anybody. He didn't have a supporting cast. You know, I don't even think at that point. Yeah, that, I'm not sure they even had Scotty or Horace Grant yet. I think that he was. Well, what was crazy was to see what the stadium looked like before he got there, like right before yeah, he got drafted. Yeah. You know, like he, they were talking about how like the NBA was struggling and like like you could see it in the stadium, like it. It legitimately looked like a like what would be a G League game now, oh, yeah, like the, the crowd people, yeah. there. And, yeah, That's like the crowd, um, though. like I go to the Texas Legends every now and again, um, just because it's right down the street. The the G League team for the Mavericks, and it, it it legitimately looked like what that stadium looked like before uh, Michael Jordan got there, and then just kind of changed and took it over. Man, like Chicago is that man city <laughs> now. Like I keep, I don't know if they ever gave him a key to the city, but if they haven't, they, they should. I think in one of the uh, parades, I'm sure they did. Um yeah, I would hope so after six championships. Well, if, you, if you look at you know the if you look at like when I grew up, I mean everybody has some sort of Bulls you know jersey. Um and and the Bulls were the the only team that had, had recent success the White Sox had like a, a year where they won the World Series in like 06. But um, the Bulls were the only team in the past 20 years that have done anything for Chicago. And before that, it was the Bears, you know, the 85 Bears. The The Cubs were really good in, you know, the, the 70s and 80s. And the White Sox were good. And the Bulls were terrible. And then it like flip-flopped for a whole like decade. 
the Bulls were legit. And then, you know, and then Derrick Rose came in and he turned the game around and then he got hurt. And, you know, the rest is history. But like, like, should he, Michael Jordan won the Bulls over for like one Chicago over for the Bulls, if that makes sense. Like, just like Dirk did the same mm. thing for Dallas for the Mavericks. I don't think really many people watched the Mavericks before before Dirk. Yeah, it makes sense. I remember the Mavericks when I was Terrible. young, but yeah, I, I I I know I definitely did not watch basketball like I watch basketball now when I was young. It was it wasn't the same. Yeah. <laughs> like but whenever we, you know, had Dirk there taking over and then had uh Steve Nash, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh I mean, but but think about it. How many people, how many kids do you see growing up when they're when they're playing sports? They're number 23. Like all of them, like there's always one kid on every team that's twenty three, yeah. right? Always. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, if you really think about it, like people even on their twenty third birthday will say this yeah, is my Jordan yeah. year. Yup. Insane to think about, man. <laughs> he, I, I mean, you know. Yeah, the the NFL owns Sunday. Michael Jordan owns the number twenty three. Yeah, yeah. They should yeah. just retire it. Across I, I, all sports, like nobody should ever guess, wear. Michael Jordan is probably like, don't retire it because there's always there's been so many good players after Jordan that played that if you retired it, it wouldn't be as significant. So like, uh, like LeBron is twenty three. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. You know, there's a couple people that are twenty three. I can't even think of them out my head. Yeah, there's a lot of them out there. I'm sure we can probably find some, but. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I, I, I'm looking forward to the next couple episodes. Uh, get see into what the, happens throughout. The bad boys years and uh, Dennis Rodman. I think they're going to highlight Dennis Rodman. That's what I was looking at. So I'm pretty yeah. excited about that because he was like that. You know, he was like that uh, that bonding agent for the for the for the Bulls. He was the rebound in defense. He he didn't yeah. he didn't ask for the ball ever. Um, he was that dirty work guy. He was the janitor, even though he's not really yeah. called a janitor, but like that's what he was. He cleaned up the messes, and he was also had crazy hair. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He he was he was batshit crazy, but a hell of a basketball player. That's yeah. for sure. But I always like his interviews the most. They always seem like he he'll try and like downplay some of the crazy shit yeah. he does. <laughs> like they kept flashing him in the documentary. They kept flashing him in the documentary in like a wedding dress. And like he was just like, yeah, you know, like he he downplayed it so much, it was ridiculous. Like, yeah, you know, whatever, I do what I do. But uh, man, I'm man. But uh, no, I, I mean, speaking of which, yeah, well, I I'm I really I, okay. So when I first when I first saw heard that the series was coming out, I was like, don't ruin it, right? You can't ruin a Jordan yeah. documentary. You can't because it's, it's like. There's only a few out there and some of them are bad, but like if they do this right, this could be the biggest documentary in sports that I've ever watched. Like Darren Hernandez one was pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. The OJ one's pretty crazy. Uh, The Bo Knows Bo one was really good. This will be Mm -hmm. the best. It's 10 parts. So hopefully they build the drama. I'm surprised they picked the 98 season, 97, 98 season, but it makes sense because of all the drama. Um, the, probably all the drama, and then also too though they did say that like they were they that was the year they allowed yeah. the camera crew to follow right, them right. everywhere, right? They didn't allow that every year, so that's probably the year they had the most footage on. So that's probably another thing too that like kind of let access, them to do that, and like, like you said, with all the drama. Yeah, it's crazy that they sat on all that footage for that long though. Well, like they've... you know, that's ninety eight. We're in two thousand twenty. This is I mean, you're literally talking. You know, twenty two years later, you're putting out it's footage. Twenty twenty, brah. <laughs> like that is wild. Yeah, yeah, it's insane to think about. You're putting out footage from when we were in first grade. Right. Yeah. Shit. You're right. <sighs> or <kindergarten>. Crazy. <laughs> Ninety eight. I was in kindergarten. Yeah. We're gonna make a lot of people feel old with that comment. That was the goal of that. Or young, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I well, that, that too. Old. But I ain't that young either. Nope, nope, nope. No, we're we're in the we're in the yeah. middle ground. 
you know, we we've had our fun, but here in a few years it's gonna start going downhill from there, man. <laughs> uh, we're, down, we're already over the hill. But screw it. <laughs> yep. Can't even leave my house anymore. <laughs> Not because of health issues, of course. <laughs> That hurts, man. That's deep. <laughs> yeah. Sad. Yeah, man. This quarantine's crazy, dude. I'm it's driving me nuts sitting in the house all damn day doing nothing. We've uh by we I mean mainly Ashton, I've observed have done like two puzzles, like <laughs> fifteen hundred piece puzzles, like ginormous. <laughs> it's so boring, man. It's cute. But, yeah, man. Uh, what we should have done is designed some jerseys, man, and submitted them to these NFL teams to, with our quarantine time. Do you see that all the new jerseys that are coming out with the yeah, NFL? Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, like I think I think they got Tampa, Atlanta. Anybody else come out with any new jerseys? Who? Oh, who else? You said? Uh, Tampa and Tampa and Atlanta are I know of for so, sure. I agree. Did anybody else come up with like any New Jersey? Yeah, I got the lowdown for you. So you got Tampa, Atlanta, San or uh, Los Angeles Chargers, um, uh, New England, uh, Cleveland, and I think there might be one okay. more. I think that's it. Let's roll through each of these. Let's see. let's take yeah. a look at them. I'll flash I'll you, them up. I'll tell you the, straight uh, up my favorite. YouTube and stuff. The Chargers. Which one? We'll start with that Legit. one. Legit. The Chargers. Legit. You find it? Try. I'm pulling. I'm looking them up right now, checking to see what they look like. Some of the I've only seen the uh, Atlanta and Tampa ones. I've just heard about the other ones, so I'm kind of curious to see what they look like. They are legitness. The Packers. Had the same uniform since 1950. Cowboys got the same bullshit, too. Let's see. Oh, dude, are these, you talking about these, like, the blue with the yellow, and then they got the all yeah, blue. Like six of them. Then they got a white with yellow pants, and then they got a, is that an all black? No, I think it's navy blue. With the white helmet? Or, yeah, it's a dark something with the white helmet. Dude, those are Angels sick. Are the I like those. Yeah. Okay. I like those. I do like those a lot. I like the blue with the yellow pants, and I like the darks like the a lot whites. on those. Those are. Yeah, the all whites. Yeah. Yeah, the all whites are nice too, but I I like those blacks are nice. I think they're black, or they could be the really dark navy blue. Who else? Who else came out with some new uniforms? Let's the, see some other uh, ones. My other favorite. I I like the. Um, uh. I like ATL and how plain they are. Um, they're not like yeah. I, I like that. I like uh, Tampa Bay's pewter. Like they don't care about the other shit because it's the same as their old one, but the pewter color is pretty sweet. And then um, I like New England's. They put the like three stripes on their shoulders. Yeah, let's check them out. Let's check them out. They're just redoing everything in New England. New jerseys, new, new players. Everything. Yeah, they're like yeah. new everything. Getting rid of the uh, getting rid of the retired people. Hmm. Ooh, I do like this. I do feel like I know that people have said it, and like I don't completely agree with what they're saying, but I do see some elements. It looks like they're trying to take on a little bit of the uniforms of the XFL just a little bit like they're taking like little bitty bits or, and pieces I feel like but I think it's just because that's like just the style of today you know yeah, but no, it I, just it seems I like see it that um but I I think that the I think that what you're seeing now is a progression of how jerseys are designed and Nike designs these jerseys so so you'll have mm -hmm. a team that'll go to the drawing board with a Nike designer and he'll give them like three or four. I, I saw this in commerce with Under Armour. They they gave like the the coaches and players um, design options and then they like decided based off of the design options they got. So they get like a like a little template that has their jerseys and then like what they want it to look like. And then they a lot of times they'll come out 
and like they'll showcase that hey you want that one that one right so depending on how the level of involvement from like nike or whatever since it, it since it is a solely a nike contract if that makes mm. sense yeah no it makes sense i i see what you're saying i mean i like it i just i just think it looks a little bit like it but i don't know could be the xfl just being they were good i think, uh, I think pompous jackasses and saying hey we changed the we changed the kickoff now now they're trying to copy our jerseys now too <laughs> like but anyways i i it sucks that they went under like they did i was did, did they change the around, but did i miss something no, oh. no, 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 no. The NFL didn't. Oh, okay. I was saying, I like that new kickoff. I kind of wish, like, part of me wonders, like, if the NFL will ever put in, like, a kickoff like that, like, in regards to just because, like, player safety-wise, that's a pretty I good like little it. No, I think it looks gig good, there, man. I feel like. And I think, I think it's cool. I think it's more exciting than the current kickoff we oh, have. Yeah. Current kickoff ends up being a touchback almost every they can freaking, yeah, they five can actually minutes. run it back, like, play freaking football, you know. Like they don't, they're... yeah. Almost every kick goes out of the end zone right now, which sucks, or at least it does on Madden. So that's that's my source of information for that <laughs> one. <laughs> but now that we have all of our sources, though, um, and the New Jersey's any other New Jersey other than New England? Uh, yeah, well, there's uh, Tampa Bay, um, uh. Dude, I like Tampa's a lot. Yeah, Atlanta. I like the. Uh, trying to think who else. Atlanta's the the mean machine. Yeah, which... yeah, <laughs> the mean machine. <laughs> <laughs> they look like they're from the longest uh, yard. Let's see. Um, so we got the chart. Oh, the Rams with their new ones, yeah. right? That they copied from the Rams. San Angelo. The Rams don't have it. Nope. The Rams just have a logo. Oh. Uh, so they're gonna keep the same uniforms but I, just change I, the I logo. I haven't heard of their I haven't seen their new uniforms yet. But they, they technically could because mm. um the way that they do their uniforms, like their helmet has the Ram horn on it. So it doesn't yeah. have a logo, so it wouldn't really change. Now I don't know if they're gonna do that's true. Uh, they may have. They may have like a whole new. But the color scheme kind of changed a little bit. Do didn't what? It? The color scheme kind of changed a little bit. No, it's the same. And then like a lighter blue color. No, I uh, same. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, but, I don't know, man. I, well, I, I mean, think they, they completely. They just need to reset. <laughs> like. Yeah, I feel like every team should redo their jerseys. Shake it up, man. Yeah. Like even the classic teams, where like you know you got that. Classic jersey. All right, that's cool. Let's make it well, a classic. So what the Cowboys and you do? Can, you can break it out once or twice Cowboys a year. The Cowboys always do like a. Um, they'll have like the same jerseys, but then they'll do like a, an alternate that's new. Like every year, they do something new. Like, yeah. Like they do like the. I I like the Cowboys color yeah. rush, the all white color the rush that they have. Scene. That's pretty clean. I like. Mm-hmm. I like those. Those are cool. I think I feel like the Cowboys are kind of like how the Packers are, like as wow. far as jerseys go, just basic but i think it's just because there's a lot of tradition like in it yeah. you know that they've kind of they, the french i mean if you really think about it brand building i mean they've got it they both got it down pretty well so i guess if it ain't broke don't fix it yeah speaking of brand building what for me man I, i've been i've been as i've been diving into this uh draft uh that's gonna be a shit show tomorrow um i was looking at it oh right? dude i can't wait so the first trade happens. Well, no, <laughs> well, first of all, besides the trades, because I think there's gonna be a lot of trades, and I, and when we do this mock draft, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get all the trades out. Like I just don't, I don't I'm not gonna play that game because I don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. But well, yeah, I'm not playing that. I'm, what I'm saying is, is the trades is in like they're trying to do it electronically, like somebody, like yeah, I, I I'm not sure how it's gonna work exactly, but. I, I believe they're swapping the trades without like people really knowing, so that way when the pick gets announced, the trade gets announced, like it normally does, right? Yeah. And, and like then, Zoom, I, but like, they're, they're have, what if there's a disconnect and like one person doesn't get it? Yeah, they're just gonna have to like phone in, and I don't know why they don't allow people to be in their house. Like, you can have what's the social distance rule? Six people? Can you not have six people in a house? Who gives a crap? Should I think it's ten? Do what? 
I think it's ten. I think yeah, it's well, it ten. Depends on the state, right? Who cares? <laughs> like, and, and do you really even need that many people? Okay, get get yeah. a camera and put it in there and have a guy that operates the shit. Other than that, you're done. Boom. Well, well, you you need. I, I think I you know. need a war room because because if you have one dude picking, then he's gonna be like Jerry Jones and be like, if Jerry Jones picked by himself right now, we would have Jer- Johnny Menzel. We would have um, like we would have all these crazy picks if it wasn't for like other people bringing him back to life, right? So, are the coaches and everything not allowed to be together though? Like, if they wanted to go meet up at like one, like say you know, McCarthy wanted to go meet up at Dak's crib and do the draft there, and all the coaches I don't know. meet I don't, there. I, I mean, I obviously that's that. that would be insane to go to your quarterback's house to do it, but. <laughs> Versus well, another coach, it, the but Cowboys are going to come up Jones with house. You think right. about the top two on their in that organization, their father yeah, son. True. So, yeah, true. Yeah, true. I just, and, I was just spitballing, man. I was really. Uh, I'm not an event. The player. Cowboys need <laughs> there. They need Jerry, Stephen, McCarthy, and Will McClay. Those are the four dudes they need there. I don't give a shit about anybody else. Like those four dudes are there. We're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> so. And you're still under the guidelines of yeah, the CDC. Exactly. Boom, so, boom, we win. So <laughs> I, I think the team should be able to stay together. I don't know if they are. I don't. I don't know how the setup's going to be on it. I just know that it's going to supposedly operate the same. It's just going to be. It's all remotely yeah. done. Yeah. So, um, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm curious to see like how many. Do you do you think how many of these draft picks or these guys getting drafted? whenever it goes to the video of them and it shows them like they're all happy because they just got picked like third overall or first overall or whatever the case may be. How many of them do you think are going to have more than like 10 people in their house? I'm going to say the first out of the first, uh, the first 10 picks. So after Cleveland's 10th pick, I think you're going to see a drop off, but I think those first 10 dudes, Mm -hmm. like the Joe Burrows, the Chase Youngs, the Kudas, or the dudes that have the potential. Huh? <laughs> they're going to have that. Like, or the guys that could have that. They're going to have that. They're going to have tons of people. They're going to have like, like, yeah. Tua's probably going to have the whole freaking state of Hawaii or wherever he's from. I don't know if he's from Hawaii. <laughs> 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 uh, it's mildly uh, racist. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm just playing, guys. Don't, we're not yeah. throwing that out there. But, uh, wherever he's from. No, nah, he uh, yeah, he's from Hawaii. Yeah, he may be. I mean, with a name like that, he could possibly be. I mean, it it looks, it definitely looks like some Samoan, or I think is Samoan? how you say it. Samoan, Somalian. That Somalian is the pirate people. <laughs> what am I talking? I'm I'm losing it, man. <laughs> I'm losing uh, it. We, we do not. But, uh, no. Uh, yeah, he's from Hawaii. He's from Honolulu. Yeah. All right. Damn. Yeah, good well, call, bro. Good call. Samoa. Samoa. Samoa's pretty close huh? to that. Yeah. I said uh, Samoa, like Samoa is pretty close to that. It's like a Pacific Island as well. So. Yeah, you got all those big dudes. Yeah. yeah. Some of the guys. I remember uh, some of those dudes, whenever we were in commerce, didn't we? Have, we had like a. Uh, was he a defensive uh, uh, lineman? So, yeah, Charlie Tuau. He's the big dude that had the real yeah, long Charlie Charlie Tuau. Yeah, dude, that guy, he was huge, man. He was a beast. I, he never played before he got to Commerce City, or had he played I, I'm before? Sure he he played. Some, I'm I'd sure heard something like that. Yeah. Um, but he, okay. uh, so he got picked up by the Chiefs the year after Commerce, and then they moved him to O line. Yeah, I saw that. And I never heard anything about it after he moved to O line. Um, I, I hadn't heard his name in the mm-hmm. in the in anything. So, and there was a couple other guys that we'll have to do a segment sometime where we just follow up on all the, commerce the, players. uh, football players from commerce. We, we've already done the one episode with, uh, Ricky, which was really cool. We'll probably get him back on to again at yeah, some yeah. point. Um, yeah, do but, like a little, uh, like definitely lost, in, lost in space over there, wherever they're at, you know, cause you know, there, there's probably yeah. a few players that are playing football, but probably probably a lot of them aren't playing, or they're they're playing Canadian, or they're playing yeah. European ball, or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, I believe a couple of them are playing European, and then obviously there's 
at least two of them play or, on or they the had Canadian some, football or they had a small stint in different, um, you know, football yeah. arenas and decided to get out of it or the XFL fell through and now they can't do shit and AAF fell through so now they can't do anything. So That'd be a cool run down to go through sometime though. Just Speaking look and of, see. But conversation for another of, day. Um, the ability or inability to, you know, hit that, that seven rounds be Mr. Irrelevant or whatever. You want to go through this, uh, these draft picks and see what we got here. Absolutely. I'm, this is the, this is the moment I've been waiting for, for this episode, man. I've been planning all day on who I think is getting drafted. We're just going to do the first round for everybody listening, but I'm, I'm definitely excited to run through these. So, these so are what's the good. wager? I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious on what yours looks like, AJ, compared to mine, because from previous knowledge of hanging out with you on the draft, you always do fairly yeah, well at these things. Um, like I remember uh, chilling at your uncle Jeremy's that one night. We were watching the draft. You were just yeah. calling pick, pick, yeah. pick, pick. I'm like, like, damn, dude. And then, uh, so I'm curious to see how yours does. But I, th- I'm, I'm gonna be confident here. We're gonna have to wager something on who gets the most picks right in the first round because I think I want to make All this right. interesting. You care to take the wager on it? What are you it? thinking? Not a not a monetary wager. Like no, we're not going to bet like a hundred bucks or something. Just something uh, cool or fun or I guess I don't know. Like we could do like hmm, I'm trying to think on like what we could do. So I've thought for like two different possibilities for this wager, and I'm I'm thinking we should do this more more often uh, as well as we go through the as we create more episodes and everything like that. Hope the people listening like it. Um, but like we could do like a wager where we just bet like a bottle of whiskey, like off the wall whiskey, and we just send it to each other or, but I don't know the logistics of mailing alcohol, but we can figure that <laughs> yeah, out that. or two, um, or two, what we could do is what I was thinking is, is whoever loses create like a, like kind of like a punishment per se, like a funny punishment, like that you have to do like something stupid, like on video or something and we share it on like our social media stuff so that way like er- it, whoever is listening can go like watch them and like see what happens so therefore like it kind of keeps it to where i don't know there's a little bit of engagement yeah. too uh I'm with, not with everybody that's listening right now you're asking <laughs> I'm not- <laughs> <laughs> no i'm, I'm trying to not trying to do that <laughs> I'm gonna make- yeah uh yeah that's true we both got careers got a job, man. Doing dumb shit <laughs> We'll stick with the let's let's see how easy is it to mail liquor because if so we'll just bet liquor. Liquor, liquor, liquor. It, what about like a TX whiskey or something? Cause I like that. You there? Ooh, that'd be good. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm sorry. I'm trying to I'm trying to see what are the rules on uh. Shipping you some alcohol, if I, well, you shipping me alcohol more so should I say? Because I'm gonna win, I'm gonna kick your ass. This, this trap, man. We'll figure that out. All right, so we're put. Oh, do what? I'm sorry, I wasn't waiting for you to talk. But the uh, so what we could do is, I was thinking like, let's do like uh, let's pick a whiskey. Like I pick the whiskey if I win, and then you pick or yeah or uh, I'm trying to think how you do that. We could do like, uh, you have to do like a bottle of whiskey that's at least like thirty dollars, and you just pick something random off the fucking works, wall and yeah. send it to them. Can you ship it? And it would do what? Yeah, I, I we'll figure out a way to ship it if you can't if we can't ship it. I'll just tell you what's. We'll fi- we'll figure out that part. If not, we'll f- yeah, yeah. We can take a picture of it. We'll figure we'll figure out that part of it. I'm trying to. Th- I feel like you can mail alcohol, but I don't know. If not, you can just do like we can just order a favor and have somebody deliver this shit oh, to yeah. you. What what I was thinking, so what I'll do so, is um, no contact delivery. What I'll though. do is uh, I'll take I'll take some notes on what you on what you picked, and then um, I'm gonna make mm-hmm. a little graphic, uh, like two two different graphics that are like uh, mock draft like like images or whatever that we did. So uh, yeah, perfect. So you want to commence okay. this? Awesome. I got mine. Yeah, let's commence this. Um, you've heard it here first. The wager is bottle whiskey. minimum $30 bottle whiskey 
off the wall brand doesn't have to be anything specific. Um, we don't want to do like one of the mainstream brands either because people listen and we want to show them these off the wall ones. Maybe boost sales of them too, get them some exposure for all fifteen people listening. <laughs> yeah, I'm into it. I'm into it. <laughs> all right, cool. I got you down for your wager. So are we doing like a point for each right. that we get right? No. Yeah, I would just say like we could say best best percentage what, per what se. If, I got one for you. What if somebody trades, but they still uh-huh. pick the same person? Ooh. Because I have a scenario hmm. where that could happen on here. Hmm. I think that should still count. Yeah, we'll say we'll say we're going off a draft slot, not draft team. So, oh, so in- so you know what I'm saying. So, like, if you're if you're the number one pick, it doesn't matter who picks you, as long as you pick the. Well, what I'm saying is, one. what if, like, for example, say New England trades up to Dallas, yeah, and they think they think sure Miami's going to take a quarterback which I don't think they'd do this, but for example, Miami, not Miami. So yeah. So new England takes Miami's spot because they think Vegas or somebody's going to take the quarterback. New England takes Jordan love at 18 or at 16 or whatever when they're at 23. But I selected then to take Jordan love at 23 anyways, without trading. Does that make sense? Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. I feel like I feel like we got to have it one way or the other. Saying. Like we either pick, you either call it for correct, either correct I think slot it's or correct. Too hard to do the, to play the trades on the slots. I think it's easier to just be like to so so. What we could say is, out of the 32 team, out of the 32 first round slots, like you said, slot, what you, percentage, what did percentage you have of somebody players did you have that were correct in that first round? Or no, 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 because. Because then that could be all. We'll we'll probably get a lot. <laughs> uh, we could damn near probably get at least eighty yeah, percent so correct. It was just associated with the team. Okay, team. You know what I'm saying. Or we just do team and slot, and it's very definitive yeah, at like that point. We, it could be the right person, wrong team. Then it's okay, not a correct cool. pick. Yeah, we'll do it that way. Because I mean, yeah, this shouldn't be very many trades where it should throw up. like that scenario. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tiebreaker being if you traded in and that guy got picked yeah. with your trade, just different team yeah. or something like that, then you can keep Yeah, that sounds cool. Cool. Hey. And then after that, we'll go the old fashioned tiebreaker and flip a coin. Flip the coin. I'm going to wait. Or flip the roll coin. Nice if you get a five, you uh, have a drink. <laughs> yeah. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, before we start this pick, this thing, I was looking, dude. Uh, there's some teams that are locked and loaded for the drafts. So you got Miami, you got three first round picks right now, as of right now, yeah. the way it stands. Minnesota's got two. San Fran's got two. What kills me is that San Fran's got two first round draft picks in their pocket, and they just went to the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's that's called that's called that's crazy um, being good at your job. <laughs> Um, yeah, like that's insane Mitch. to me. Like, um, and then what I found really funny looking over this: there's no first round draft pick for Houston, mm-hmm. and they traded away DeAndre Hopkins. Like, you got a wide receiver deep draft right now, and they had no first round pick. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is getting even worse for them <laughs> as we continue fire, to go man. on. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, if I'm if if I'm Deshaun Watson, as soon as my contract's up, I'm getting the hell out of Dodge. Dude. Yeah, yeah, but that shit yeah, is what it is <laughs> for another day. <laughs> I'm ready. All right, so mock draft. Here we go. Uh, first pick of 2020 NFL draft in Las Vegas, but nobody's in Las Vegas. Who you got uh, first I pick? Think it's obvious because they already said it, but uh, Joe Burrow. Uh-huh. It's unofficial, but it's, it's oh. unofficial. <laughs> no way so? uh, no that's definitely happening oh, <laughs> um, no man Joe Burrow all the way uh, Cincinnati would be it. 
crazy. I think that I feel like they're Miami's throwing around like some potential trades, but I don't think anybody's stupid enough to turn around Joe Burrow. He's gonna be. I feel like he's gonna be very well in the NFL. So, and he's a franchise quarterback that you take. Well, they can, first they pick, don't trade. To, <laughs> they have a chance to change the fortunes of their franchise with this guy if they can build around him. So, you got AJ Green. Him is a good start. Yeah. Um, you know. So. Yeah. Right. That, that's yeah, they they and then you got Joe Mixon at running back. They're really not they're a bad a team. Though. They just don't they're have it. So bad. They they're perpetually eight and eight. Yeah. Um, then, you know Marvin Lewis. I don't think he ever won a playoff yeah. game with them. The 15, 10, 12 years he he was a coach. Um, you know they had Geno Atkins. They wasted his career. Uh, they wasted. Um, mm-hmm. that, is it Geno Atkins? Is that right? Yeah, Geno Atkins. They wasted Vontez Burfitt's career. They, you know. They thought that Pac-Man Jones was the answer at corner. I mean, Cowboys proved that wrong. Obviously, um, Joe Mixon, he's legit, but they, they also wasted Giovanni Bernard's career. They wasted uh, Jonathan Hill's career. They um, they don't have an O-line. Um, Tyler Eifert, he, he can't stay healthy. Uh, that's their tight end. And, and unfortunately, they're probably going to waste A.J. Green's career. Now, hopefully, for A.J. Green's purpose and Joe Burrow's purpose, they, they, they can – figure it out but um they wasted Ocho Cinco's career they wasted Hushman Zada's career like man they're just they're just trash like I think they're worse than the Browns when it comes to organizations yeah they kind of fly under the radar yeah. with that too I think it's because the Browns are notoriously bad because they have the bad the terrible well, records the consecutive bad to team to go with it forever man the Bengals had a yeah. good team like when they had mm-hmm. Ocho Cinco on one side and Hushman Zada on the other they were good I mean, Carson Palmer, quarterback, that's mm-hmm. legit. Um, but, all right, moving on to the next pick. All right, so prefer right now it's Washington sitting in that slot at number two. What do you got taken at number two? Number two, uh, I feel like this one's a pretty obvious one, too. I'm going to go Chase Young from o- the Ohio State yeah. with the edge rusher. He's, I mean, be- best player in the draft by far. Um, just – a savage. I think they'd be crazy. I think they to pass said that he was he got a ninety nine draft grade, and there's been like five people have gotten that. It was like it was him, Saquon Barkley, um, Andrew Luck, um, Patrick Peterson, and uh, mm-hmm. somebody else. I think he's. I think he is by far the best packaged player that we have that we've seen in a long time. Um, I thought Miles Garrett was there too. Um, I think he still is great, but I just mm-hmm. think he mentally is obviously off a little bit. But um, I think that he's better than Joey Bosa. He's more dynamic. He could be an Aaron Donald type player. I think that's his ceiling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, are you are yeah, you going with him yeah, as well absolutely. for this? One? I don't think that they're moving from that spot. Um, the only time that I think that they would try to trade up is um, is if Cincinnati wasn't going to take Joe Burrow, and I think absolutely they're going to take mm-hmm. Joe Burrow. So. Yeah, no, no doubt about it that they're taking Joe, and like I said, it'd be they'd be crazy to pass on him. It, it does suck though to see things like this happen. This guy's so Chase Young, he's so talented, and you got to watch him go to uh, Washington, and it's just like, oh man, he he's probably gonna put up good stats there and everything like that. But that's probably about all he's gonna the get. Good thing about, ever, the good thing about him going to Washington is he's gonna play in a division that gets a lot of exposure, so he's not gonna get stuck in Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's like it's like old school football rivalries, but it doesn't have as much exposure as the NFC East with Philadelphia, New York, Washington, and Dallas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the know? the East is definitely. Um, what's up? Oh, I was, I was say, um, yeah. Anyways, continue. Yeah. But yeah, no, the, 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 it could be a good place for him as far as that goes. So for sure, um, we're both in agreement. Chase Young, Ohio State, number two, going to Washington. Um, next pick, uh, number three, Detroit has the number three pick. Um, there's been a little bit of rumors circulating that Miami's thinking about m- trying to move up to that pick, um, thinking about maybe not. Um, what do you think happens with that? Do you think they're going to trade? Do you think they're going to stay? I think, what, what, I think what's Miami up? only goes to three if they think New York is going to take a quarterback, that the only thing that would make sense, because I think mm-hmm. they're going to go for um, a quarterback. So I think Detroit stays. And I think they take Okuda, 
because I think he's the best defensive back mm. by a long shot. Um, I think that he's another game changer for that organization because they're they got rid of Darius Slay, so they have a mm-hmm. huge need right now at cornerback, and I think that that's where they go with it. Yeah, I definitely agree, man. Uh, that's who I put down as well. Number three, Jeff Kuda, uh, the Ohio State again. Um, I, w- I was torn on this one at first, though. I was kind of wondering if they would trade to move up. Um, like Miami, I was seeing it around everywhere. And just the more I thought about it, though, it just to me it didn't make sense for them yeah. to trade up to that number three spot. Because like you said, they would have to have like some knowledge that the Giants are going to um, draft a quarterback, which – from what I'm aware of, they're not they need wanting to do so. And, and yeah, and why would like why would they draft a quarterback? They just drafted a right. quarterback last year. That's supposed to be their franchise guy. So why would you go turn around and do it again this year without really even giving and, him and a o- shot? And Okuda is like the real deal, man. He he's a cornerback that played for the mm-hmm. Bama system, um, playing in the SEC against really yeah. good offenses. Um, I think he's the real deal, and and he's not a he's not an injury prone guy either. So at corner, that's something you really want. I think I think he'll be better than Darius Slay was. So I think that he's. Oh, I think I definitely think he'll be better than Darius Slay. It's gonna be a tough task because he's good too. He's not as much. But, yeah, I, he's I, not as a I think it, like Darius. Slay. Well, we'll see as he gets progresses. But yeah, um, definitely in agreement. I think the only way Miami was trading to move up is if they traded to move up to number one and yeah. get Joe Burrow. I think Miami I think that was the only thing that was happening. I think they would have had to give away all three first rounds. They'd give a first round and maybe a first round for next year. Uh, Yeah, 100%. Uh, All right, number four. So we both got the same. Damn, we're probably not going to owe anybody anybody. The same stuff right now. (laughs) Right now, we well, the same. uh, This is like I think these. I think it'll start changing after this. So yeah, so number four. um, Right now, the New York Giants are sitting at number four. Um, Who are you taking? Uh, number four, um, you mentioned it already. They need O line. Um, you've got your franchise quarterback you just drafted. You want to protect him. You got Saquon Barkley needs help with the O line. Um, I got uh, Jedrick Wills Jr. Of Alabama. Yeah. So I was torn on this one. Uh, I think that Wills is another Bama guy. Um, I think Wills is the best option here. But uh, mm-hmm. Tristan Wirfs. I think his name is Tristan. I don't want to be screwing his name up, but Werfs. I think he's another option for them. So um, he's a Iowa guy. Um, I just think that he's um, he's not as good as Wills, and I think that they kind of would be. Kinda, he's Jedrick Wills is the best O lineman in the game right now in the, in the draft. I mean, and if they don't take him, mm-hmm. I don't think they're serious about winning. You know yeah. what I mean? So. And I and I think Jason sense. Garrett's going to yeah. push for it because he's the OC, and I think that this new guy is a special teams dude. So I think he understands how you win football games, and it's by protecting your quarterback and your running back and your receivers. And the way you do that is you draft linemen. Yeah, I think I think I think the O line are important to have. You got to have that there. If not, you end up with you know situations like Andrew Luck where he can't stay healthy and then ends up retiring yeah. early. You know because he's tired of dealing with getting beat up because. Indy did not they, they they gave him all the weapons in the world but gave him no protection. And, and they got a good tight so. end, you know, Evan Ingram is legit. Like um mm. they got a good receivers court receiving core with uh um what's his name? Mm. Slayton and um uh yeah. whatever the other dude I can't think uh off the top of my head. But um And even if they did want to add a receiver with as deep as this oh, receiver man, class him. is, yeah. they could turn around they could turn around and in the second round use their fourth you know, Uber their fourth pick of the second round. Texas. And like, yeah. 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 Just somebody that slips through the first round to that point. Yep. You know? All right. Who you got, man? That would normally probably go first round the other time. Do what? So, did, I said that would, they, they could grab someone that slips that would normally be like a first round talent in yeah, the other absolutely, draft. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, We're four for four. For the Giants, you took, uh, yeah, you took the same guy. I was, I, right. was uh, I was almost, right. I was Next almost on the, uh, worst train on that one but i think that wills is too good yeah i it I, I was torn i didn't know which one to do either but i like i i kind of came to the same conclusion as you i think that i think that he's just the the best in the in the uh the draft class right now as far as o, o-line men go and i feel like if you're gonna go o-line you gotta go you know best available absolutely um 
All right. Next pick we got on the books. Uh, this is the pick everybody's been looking at too. Uh, what is um, Miami going to do? Fifth round pick. Um, there's been some rumor that they're looking at, what was it? Justin Herbert is the name or something like that um, from Oregon um, or possibly doing Tua. They've been very vocal that they want to do quarterback, but they're, it seems like th- there's been some rumors lately that they may not go to a, uh, yeah, what do you so, think? Um, I think, uh, LA and Miami are going to play off of each other. So if one takes one, the other one's going to take the other. Um, so I'm looking at, mm-hmm. um, I think the uh, really wish Miami would not do this because I think there's two quarterbacks sitting out there that you could freaking pick up. Um, but, I think they should go with Isaiah Simmons, but they're gonna they're not gonna go with him. They're gonna go with Justin Herbert, I think. I think that his intangibles, his tangibles, his height, his arm strength, um, he played for a, a good team that, that that was pretty successful. Um and I think Tua is too much of a question mark right now. Um I like Tua a lot. I think he's a better player than Justin Herbert. He's a gamer. I just think that that injury really, really scares these guys. Um especially like something that he may not recover from. Right. So, um, there's a hip injury, which is where your power comes from. So, um, I could see them taking Justin Herbert and that's my pick. Okay. Yeah. This, we finally got a different pick. Um, I, I, I hear what you're saying with the injury with Tua. I still think they're going to take him. Um, I think that, Talent wise, two is so much better than your other options in the draft right now. And I think with Miami, they've got a lot of picks. They got a lot of things that they can build around a very talented quarterback that hopefully can stay healthy um, and recoup from that injury. I think he will. And I think he's going to be fine. Um, I think that the the decision that they they make right now could be somebody's job in three to four years. So. I, I if I'm trusting that job my my job with anybody else other than Joe Burrow on here is gonna be uh two up for sure. So I, I put two up for the number five pick. Gotcha. Like I said, that was um whatever LA does, I think Miami's gonna do the other. I, I so again I wanna go for the six pick. Um you wanna you wanna tell me what you think for the six pick for the Chargers? Yeah, uh, I went complete opposite. Yeah. Justin Herbert. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, like exactly like you said. So, I, so. I think with this one, man, um, I'm gonna say the exact same thing I said a minute ago. I think that they're if they're the man. I wish L.A. or and or Miami wouldn't do this because you imagine if the Chargers got uh, Simmons here. Like Isaiah Simmons, they could completely transform that defense. They've already got, you know, um, Joey Bosa on that D-line. Um, they've got good corners. They, yeah. They've got a lot of potential. And if they would just, like, not look into this little yeah. tiny peephole, there's two quarterbacks out there that are worthy of the, to play. And if your defense is good enough, it doesn't matter how good your quarterbacks are. So, like, like Cam and James mm-hmm. Winston, Winston are both sitting out there, and I know they won't take them. Um so I, I my pick was uh, Tua on for for LA. So, um, I, yeah, I, I don't. But your to... your picks your picks Tua, uh, but you right. don't want them to do that. You want them to go take linebacker Isaiah Simmons, beef yep. up their defense, and then go, go free and sign a free agent. Quarterback. Yeah. yeah, I see what you're saying. They got to do something for the quarterback, whether it be free agency or draft. I think you're right though. I think they well, are going to draft. Name, Unfortunately, I think uh, that. We... I think you're wrong on who they're going to draft. But they're they're definitely going to draft they, they it. Said they, they said uh, they're sold on that dude. Uh, what's his name? Um, played for Bills. I can't think of it. Tyrod Taylor. So. Oh, Tyrod Taylor. Yeah, they. I I think that is them trying to convince when the, with them saying they they are trying not to get hopes up about a great season right now. But they're also trying to put on a front like that they're confident that they know what they're doing right now. So they're saying dumb shit like we're confident in Tyrod Taylor. Nobody's been confident in Tyrod Taylor in like four years. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I was just giving him some credit, <laughs> but um, 
<laughs> I'm trying to be nice, but uh, but no, nah, man. Like I, I think that's complete bullshit. They've got to get a quarterback that's better than that, and I think they're going to turn to the draft to do it. Um, yeah, I, I think the smarter decision would have been to take Cam. To be honest with you, to take you. but that's just me. Cam oh, you, Newton oh, in the off play, season. Yeah, the yeah. Wait, he's not mm-hmm. in the draft. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, no, no. They need to draft Cam Newton. All right. Uh, let's He's move a to the next pick. Uh, got number seven. Carolina's sitting there. Who, who you got? So I think Carolina's going to do exactly what you wanted the L.A. Chargers to do. Um, I think that they are going to beef up their defense a little bit. I think uh, they went where they took the free agency route, went and got Teddy Bridgewater, who held it down in New Orleans. I think with this pick, they're going to take Isaiah Simmons. Uh, the linebacker from Clemson. Yeah, absolutely. I'm 100% in agreement. Um, I don't know how you let Isaiah Simmons go to number seven, to be honest. Uh, I think he's overall the yeah. second best player in this draft, but it's how the needs align. So um, mm-hmm. I think it goes Chase Young, Simmons, Joe Burrow. Like those are my top three. And the fact that Simmons falls to number seven just shows the needs are quarterback and defense and that's an or line or whatever. But um, yeah, it's unfortunate for Simmons that he's going to fall. It'll be a good spot for him. He'll, he'll directly replace, you know, the Luke Keekley of the world, which will be big shoes to fill. So um, they mm-hmm. definitely, they definitely need that spot filled. So. Yeah. No, definitely. I think he's going to be a force to reckon with once he gets his feet wet in the league, too. So, I think it's going to be a big are, pick from Carolina if they take him, We are him, of in course. line five out of seven of these. This is not even fun. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's not fun, though. So yeah. I, I, I hope that as we get a little bit further, they start kind of spacing out. I, maybe once we get past the top ten, we'll see what happens. But I mean, I feel like some of these were some of these. I feel like were pretty easy to call. We, I mean, we'll find out tomorrow. What happens if we pick pick them all the same, with the exception of our two? Well, what if we pick them all wrong, with the exception of our two that we're not cor- both correct on, but somehow we both get that wrong? Like Miami takes uh, a quarterback, but doesn't take either one that we picked. You know, um, probably won't happen. But it, it, if that were to happen, if we both lose, we just <laughs> yeah i don't know i'm just trying to think of a scenario if we if, if we both end up with the exact same score tie tiebreaker is you gotta buy your own bottle of whiskey and we'll just get drunk on the next episode <laughs> like all right let's, let's but, do uh, it all right anyways moving along along before we get into a rabbit hole uh next pick um you got arizona sitting at number eight um They've got they they were the ones that took the amazing deal from the Texans this offseason. Got um, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, resigned Fitzgerald, and um, is this the pick from? Houston? They've got Kyler Murray. Is this the Houston Do pick I? or is this their pick? I think this is their pick. This is their no. This is their pick, but this is just. I was just saying they got the trade off them, so they added some weapons already. What do you think they're going to do? They think they're going to keep going weapons, defense, O line. Well, uh, I think they're in line with what New York, um, the Giants were going to do. I think they'll take Tristan yep. Worse. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember their O line situation is pretty rough. Um, they need somebody to protect Kyler Murray. They need Wills or Worse. So whoever the Giants. Don't take, they'll take the other. So Wills and Worfs are kind of the same situation as Tua and Herbert to me. So if Worfs falls down and Wills gets drafted, they'll, they'll take Worfs. So my pick is Worfs, Tristan Worfs. Yeah, that's who I got as well, man. Uh, I've got Tristan Worfs, um, the old lineman from Iowa. I think the like you said, the only way that that changes is if New York yeah. changes. Um, if New York does, if they take Tristan Worfs, then okay. Jedrick Will is going to go to Arizona. It, it's going to be a flip flop, I feel like, of the two. Um, so there's another one um, that we are now in line on. Um, hmm. What do you What do you think's going on with the next pick though in Jacksonville? Um, who Who are you seeing so them take? Jacksonville. I think they're going to take best. Oh, who do I have for Jacksonville? <clears throat> 
see. I think that they they'll probably take best available because they have so many pit. Don't they have two picks? That uh, yeah, they got another pick. Um, I believe they've got two. They've got so two picks. They're gonna take yeah. this Derek Brown. Um, I think. Uh, give me a second. Derek Brown. Uh, from Auburn. I think he was a defensive tackle. Big dude. Um, they don't have. They got rid of Collat. Mm-hmm. Didn't um, who they got? Oh, I can't think of who they got rid of. One of their their like veteran guys, Clayus Campbell. Maybe they got rid of. Mm-hmm. They have a. I believe they have so. a legit yeah, yeah. need at defensive tackle, so I'm saying they're gonna, uh, they're gonna draw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna uh, take Derek Brown because I think he's the next person on the list. Besides, I think Jared Judy's on there as like, like a top ten, but I don't think that they're gonna take mm-hmm. a receiver because I think that there's so many receivers, but there's nobody like Derek Brown. So um, I think they're gonna wait mm-hmm. till. Till later on to pick a receiver because there's so many. Gotcha. I definitely agree. I think they've got needs both O line and D line. Um, I I just disagree on the person. Um, I'm I think they're gonna take Javon Javon Kinlaw yeah. from uh, yeah, South Carolina Kinlaw. at the number nine. He, so, the, only, the only thing that's scary so, about Kinlaw uh, is he uh, he's got uh, some knee problems, um, mm-hmm. which. Yeah, I was tossed between him and Derek Brown though. I, I, I know they're going to take best available, and I think those are the two that are best available. And I just think that's who they're going to rock with on him. Um, I think that's going to be the pick. So we got a different pick again. We got one where the I it different. Would be, this could after, be after it could be the deciding. Kind of goes the, you know, yeah. This this right here could be the this this could be the decider right here. If uh, you're right, depending I'm wrong, who, or vice versa. Depending on who you say next. <laughs> so, you got number 10. That is, that is Cleveland. true, Cleveland. Who you got for Cleveland? <laughs> uh, oh, Cleveland. Who do I have? Let's see. This one I'm torn on. Because I think Cleveland. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. the uh, Jets, Cleveland Brown. You're going with Brown? Yeah. So, with yeah, with the Browns, I was thinking that no, 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 not Derek Brown. Uh, the Cleveland Browns, I think. Um, I I was curious on if they would take a D lineman just because of the Miles Garrett situation. I don't know how long he's going to be out or anything like that, and maybe they just get a replacement just in case something happens, um, where he doesn't come back for a long time or doesn't come back at all type deal after that incident. Um, I think he will be back, so I th- and I think they kind of know that too um, eventually at some point. So I don't think they're going to overreact at this point. I think they're just going to take their lump. I think they're going to go O-line and protect Baker. I got um, – I, correct me if I'm wrong on the pr- pronunciation. Uh, Mechie yep. Becton from Louisville. Yep, I got the same pick. That's who I took. Nice, <laughs> nice. I think it's a good pick, man. I think I think I think I think I think a lot of people are thinking they're gonna go defense because everybody's like, oh, they gotta get somebody to uh, replace Miles Garrett while he's out, yada yada yada. And it's like, yo, like I I don't I th- I think people are overreacting. I don't think he's gonna be out as long as people I think, think he is. Um, like they've already started like the appeals process on all of his stuff. So I think I th- he'll I think get four to six games, but him. I think Miles Garrett's a generational talent. I don't know. And, and you can always go extra D lineman, but I don't think there's a D lineman right now. Um, I guess you could go with Derek Brown, but I don't think they need a defensive tackle. So um, I don't think there's a D lineman on here that you maybe Chasson, but I think that they see a six, seven, two, three hundred and sixty four pound Becton, and they're they're gonna be smitten with this guy. Like Andrew Thomas is the other one, but dude, like. Six seven, <laughs> three hundred sixty four pounds is huge. Mm-hmm. You need to, you got to protect Baker, man. Somehow. Yep, he's got to have some time to throw. He's young. You want to keep him healthy. O line's way to go. You got to take it. Now what? what you got, three what you got for the J E T S Jets. The goddamn Jets. Uh, I had. For them, I think that we're going to see the very first wide receiver go uh, to the Jets at number 11. Um, they lost uh, 
Robbie Anderson over the over the offseason. They don't have a good receiving core. Uh, I mean, they, it's it's not very deep at all. They need receivers. They have a lot of needs. I think I think they got O line needs yeah. as well. Um, but I I think with this pick, um, I believe that the talent is going to be too much to um, overlook. And I think they're going to go Jerry Judy, wide receiver from Alabama. Judy. 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 And go with old Judge I Judy. I think, he's a, I think he's a top eight talent uh, overall player. Um, and I think that uh, you can't, they can't go wrong by picking him. Um, the problem that I have with them picking it is their O line is trash. So I see them taking. <clears throat> Really, I I, I kind of struggle with this. Um, if Cleveland took Andrew Thomas, I think that they would take Becton. <coughs> but um, I'm thinking they're going to take uh, Andrew Thomas. I think he's such a good uh, O lineman for Georgia. Um, that team was really good. They were a good running team. Um, I think that just makes sense um, to build. And I think that this the the reason why I just think that this uh, receiving draft is so freaking deep. They're going to find something. Um, I'm surprised they didn't make more moves in free agency, but I think it's because the later rounds they are going to take a couple receivers. So um, Judy's hard to, mm-hmm. hard to pass. This this is the first time that I could see uh, a Vegas or a San Francisco or um, one of those teams trading up to jump ahead to get one of these players. But um, I think they're going to take a O-line, uh, Andrew mm-hmm. Thomas. Okay. All right, we got a different we got another different yeah. there we go. There we go. Another another right. different. Um I was torn on that one. I definitely thought they were gonna take O line, but I th- my 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 deciding factor on why I think they're gonna go receiver and get Judy, because I think Judy's gonna be one of those that's gonna be generational talent. And I think that they take yep. him. Um because they're probably already not going to be in line to do very well this upcoming season either. It's going to be another bad season. So sell some tickets. Darnold's going to have to take his lumps this year. They're going to probably get another good draft pick next year. And they'll probably take a, you know, best available O line next yeah. year. I bet in the first round, Yeah, that or they take one you know deeper into the draft this year um, and work with it and hopefully find something in the rough there. So, but you, you said you had, uh, I was just trying to keep track of this. You said you had, uh, Andrew Thomas, correct? Yep. From Georgia. All right, all right. Your Jets. Andrew. But I like your thought. I like your all right. Number That's 12. Like number 12. At, at 11. That's um, that could happen. I mean, yeah. who, who knows, right? Um, yeah. So at 12, got the Raiders. First year in Vegas. What do you think? Mm hmm. First year in Vegas, um, I think on this one, um, I think they're going to go – I think we're going to see back-to-back receiver picks. I got C.D. Yep. Lamb so from Oklahoma. Um, that's – yeah, yeah. That's, that one just seems a pretty, pretty easy pick, and it's probably going to slide to them with oh. no problem. See, so what I've, everything I've heard is I think that they're smitten with C.D. Lamb. Like they love this guy, yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, that's what I've heard too. Yeah, like I've heard. And who do they do they have? They, yeah, they Jones. They don't really. What's their receiver? Zay Jones what? and um, Darren Waller, tight end. Um, and then uh, there's a guy on the other side. He's I think he's pretty good. Is it Williams? Uh, I think they just need a receiver. Hold on, let me see. Open Raid it, not open Vegas. Yeah, I keep I keep wanting to say Oakland well, too. I still say San Diego. Dude, that, their state, their state, their stadium in Vegas is gonna be cool, man. Uh when we were there for the wedding back in February, it was super nice, man. It was like all black. Yeah. Look like a damn oh, spaceship sitting that's in the right. They got uh Tyrell Williams, he's legit, and then uh, they just got um <laughs> Nelson Aguilar and they have Hunter Renfro. So they need okay. a receiver. Mm-hmm. 
I know they like T. Higgins too bad. I think yeah. T. Higgins is gonna fall to the second round. So, I, yeah, yeah, I definitely think he's gonna fall. Um, we'll yeah. get into that yeah. here right. in a, here in a bit though, because I don't think he's gonna quite fall that far. But we'll get to that yeah. when I pick him. <laughs> he good. <laughs> um, all right, pick number thirteen. Uh, this is one of the two first round picks that San Francisco has. Uh, this is the one they traded for just a couple weeks ago from Indiana. Um, what do you think San Francisco is doing with this 13th pick? So this, this is a stretch, man. Like the more I think about it, but, um, I'm gonna go with Jared Judy, but I think they may do a swap with Vegas. They may make a trade with Vegas right there. 12 for 13, um, to get Judy. Cause I don't think that I think one of the, one of the, one of the two things going to happen. They're going to make a call. They're going to be like, Hey, are you taking Judy? They're like, no, we're taking CD Lamb. All right, cool. We're going to take Judy. Cool. Boom. Because I think that Vegas wants CD Lamb. So I'm going to go with San Francisco taking Judy. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, on this one, I think we're going to see a trade. I think, so. um, I think you're going to see uh, San Fran. Uh, they've been t- San Francisco has been talking about a, a lot about being willing to trade down. Um, basically give up like this pick, this 13 pick for a, a later first round pick plus like a second or third round pick type deal. Um, so that, cause as of right now they have two picks in the first round, but they have no picks in rounds yeah. two through five. Right. So, um, what they were talking about is they're interested in trading down. So that way, if they start seeing a player slide, they can maybe jump on that player in one of those rounds. Right. Um, I've got them trading this pick to Philly. Philly's going to trade up from the twenty-one spot to thirteen. Uh, give them the give them an extra pick in later rounds right. as well. And then I think Philly's going to take Henry Ruggs the third, uh, another yeah. receiver from Alabama. He's a uh, he's the one that ran like a four like a sub four four, um, and then got hurt at the end of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's <laughs> he's a speedster. He's legit, man. Ruggs is legit. Yeah. Uh, and Philly, Philly needs receivers, man. So like bad. So I think I think that'll be good for them if they move up and get that. When, it seems like when they go to Philly, they they lose their ability <laughs> to catch. So yeah, got the, the hands are cold. It's cold they, up there. <laughs> yes. All right. Oh, so man. we move to four. All right. So Jerry Judy is who yep. you got as yep. going to San Fran yep. as your pick. All right. All right, I just right. don't think he's gonna fall that far, man. It's all, right, all speculation. Go. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Obviously, I mean, we, this is our unprofessional yeah, I, opinion, I, as always. Like so. I said, I like your idea yeah. of him trading. I, I could see somebody else trading for him. Uh, I could see Philly doing it. They they may have to give a lot up for it, though. Um, uh, but yeah. I think if Judy's available for San Francisco, I don't know how you don't take that dude. Um, yeah, I, I don't either. But I, I've just I've heard in red on the the potential for trade um like i said it's all speculation too so like i just i threw the trade in there because i didn't want to just do all picks i know there's going to be some trades at some point so you gotta you gotta take a gamble it's kind of like doing your march madness bracket you know there's gonna be an upset somewhere you just gotta pick one and hope that it's that one this without trades so so like i think there's gonna be trades and i know there are gonna be trades but I just didn't do that because it's a lot to think about. So. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. It makes it a little bit more so, difficult, or not difficult, but like just makes it's more to keep up with for sure. I thought about just doing it straight through. But I was like, eh. when I found out we we're putting a wager on it, I was like, oh, I gotta do yeah. more homework now. Well, I mean, I did my homework. <laughs> I just don't. It's too much. I just was like, ah, it just got started yeah. confusing and uh-huh. how many picks they're gonna get and all that shit. And I was like, I'm over it. So, um. So I didn't concern with the later round picks. Okay, yeah, they'll give them a pick. What's up? So who you got at fourteen? Fourteen Tampa Bay. Uh, I think that Andrew Thomas. I think they're going to put a, another O lineman yeah. there uh, to help protect Brady. Um, I mean, he's got plenty of weapons right now. Um, I was torn though. I was thinking maybe a running back, um, just because I think that's the main run, weapon, or that's a weapon they're missing but i, th- I think they're gonna go andrew thomas the only, part, the only What's person up? i would even want to draft is jonathan taylor yeah uh, who you got going for tampa so hold on 
just thinking. Give me a second here. All right, so for Tampa, I've <laughs> gone with a receiver. We'll see, right? Um, they've got a lot of weapons, but I also think uh, – actually, you know what? I think this is one that I think they're going to trade out. So um, wait a second. I, I had this written down. It was confusing me. I think that somebody's going to take try to take that spot. Um, somebody needs defense. So I was looking at a, a Atlanta for Tampa trade and put Atlanta. I didn't realize I even wrote this. My bad. <laughs> I was confused. Um, you there? Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know if I lost you. Um, so let's do this. So let's do nah. Atlanta. Is gonna take uh, C.J. Anderson, Henderson. Sorry, C.J. Henderson from Florida. So I think they're scared that Denver may take him, or I think they really want this guy. I think they're gonna trade for Tampa and a couple, maybe an extra pick in there. Um, so C.J. Henderson. Okay, I can definitely see that happening. Like I said, I think they they think they're. I think they are afraid of uh, Denver getting them, which leads us to the next pick, which is number 15, yep. Denver, um, which it's funny that you say that you're afraid Denver would get them because that's actually who I got slotted in there. I think Denver's going to take the best person available, best player available at this point in the draft is going to be C.J. Anderson. Anderson, sure. Anderson, right? Okay. Anderson, yeah. I keep wanting to say Anderson, but it's the running back. The running back, y'all. The running back. <laughs> Let's see. Who? Oh, sorry. I was right. I was right, taking my notes here, and I was trying to figure out. Um, yeah, CJ Henderson played for Florida. Man, he was legit. Like, he's one of the best cornerbacks um, I've seen in a while. Um, safety cornerback. I, I mean, I think he's gonna go as a corner, but um, I think he's got a lot of potential to be really good. Yeah. So we'll see. The corners have been decent lately coming out of the drafts. Like they've actually like Yeah. I think he's gonna I think he's gonna do really and they've definitely been decent. That's how the Packers secondary's gotten as good as they have. We I think we drafted like two or three guys in the secondary over the years. Which is kinda and then, cool. And I think that if they're coached correctly, I think it can really make it be a game changer. So Yeah, so at fifteen mm-hmm. did I already no, I didn't get my pick, did I? You got Denver. Yep, so fifteen Denver. Now I'm all jacked up. Um, I think they're going to take – so I still have rugs on the board. I think they're going to take rugs. Okay. That wouldn't be a bad pick either. Same thing, best available gives them yep. a target for, for offense. Lock. For <laughs> Lock. They're confident yeah. in him. I think they need to run they need Confidence back is too. Key. Like I like uh, Philip Lindsay, but I don't think he's going to yeah. come back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, now you got with the 14th pick on your last one a minute ago with Tampa Bay. You said they traded yep. to Atlanta. Does that mean Tampa's dropping down to 16, or what's yep, going Tampa on with that? 16. Okay, who you got them taking? Um, let's see. Well, I think they're going to take best available, but I think they need O line. So I was going with Josh Jones from Houston. Okay, I think that's a good, good pick. Good pick. Good pick. Um, if that is what happens with the trade, who'd you say again for Denver? I'm sorry. Um, Rugs. Oh, Rugs, Rugs, Rugs. That's right. Sorry, I'm just trying to. Keep it written down. Trying to keep the log, good. keep the log. You know, keep the good. minutes of the of the eating so, game. <laughs> um, all right, so you got a trade to Tampa, Josh Jones. Me, um, I didn't, I didn't call a trade on on the picks on this one. Um, so I've got it still sitting with Atlanta. Um, I think they're gonna take the best defensive player available. I think they're, and I've still surprisingly on my board on this end. I still had Derek Brown sitting there at pick sixteen. I think they're gonna take Derek Brown from Auburn at sixteen. They hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think 
the more I'm looking at this as I'm I'm reading over it, I think that's a stretch for him to fall that far. Um, but I mean, stranger things have happened. You never know, man. Absolutely. You never know. Uh, all right. So uh, next pick, you, you got your you got your boys, the Dallas Cowboys. What do you think they're so, doing? If we're going off of all this happening, and like say off of my draft, so. I don't know if this is legit, but like if if this dude, if um, oh man, I just lost my train of thought. Give me a second. So two things could happen. I think the Cowboys might trade down here, um, and go after like an Xavier McKinney or a Delpit. But I don't think so. I'm just gonna keep them in this spot though because I think that they're gonna stay. I think they're gonna take this um, uh, uh. Ch- uh, wow, I can't think of his name. Uh, K. Levon Chasson. Chasen. Chase. I think it's Chasson or the edge rusher for LSU. LSU. I think if he's available, yeah. they take him. I agree with you. Uh, that's who I got. I think. I think they're. I think they're sticking in that spot. I think they, I could see them trade down too, though, because they they don't have a whole lot of needs to fill well, right now. They, they have a safety. Um, I think they, they, have a, they need a safety. Slip. So. We know that, yeah. but I think that Delpit slash Xavier McKinney, they're so close, and I don't know if they're really sold on them. I think if they took a safety, they'd take Xavier McKinney, but in that case, I think they would trade down, probably give that spot to a New England or somebody like that that, that wants to trade up, which New England really does that anyways, or Minnesota or something like that. Um, I think that the only way they take a safety is if they trade down. And I think that they may sit in this spot waiting for a CJ Henderson. And if CJ Henderson doesn't come, then I think they're going to wait for Chasen or Chasen and they'll take Chasen because you don't get like a, they call them war daddies. You don't get a war daddy very often. And I think he's one of those guys. I think he's legit. So would you have it? Right. We got another one that we're in agreement on ATL. You said Derek Brown. What's up? Uh, Who'd you I'm have sorry. Eight, uh, Sixteen for ATL. Okay, uh, Derek that. Brown. My. I'm just writing down. My bad. Uh... No, 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 you're good, dude. Good. We gotta gotta keep logs yeah. so that way, once this is over on Thursday night, be tomorrow night. Um, yeah. once it's over, I can call the yeah, collect. You have uh, you have Chasen, right? Or Chasen too. So okay. Yeah, I'm taking All right, him there so too. All right, so Miami, what do they do, man? Oh man, uh, Miami. I think I think with them, um, they did good by taking the QB early in the draft. I'm thinking, um, but what do you need to do with your QB? You need to protect him. Um, I think they're going to go O line. I think Austin Jackson, USC, is going to be their pick at number I eighteen. Even, I don't know much about Austin Jackson. I haven't read about. Let me see. I can find this guy. Action Jackson. Jackson. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Action Jackson, right there. Um, from what I was reading, he's one of the. I think he's like one of the top ten O line prospects yeah. in the draft right now. Um, same thing. I didn't really know much about him, but from what I was able to read on this, um, he seemed to be one of the best options available. Um, at this pres at the 18th pick in the draft, and um, I, I think they need to. They. Me, pers- me, I put Tua as the person they're drafting, and with the fear of injury that they have with him, it, the, that that's yeah, you gotta protect him. You gotta get him a O lineman at some point. I like this. Um, uh, I one hundred percent like I like that pick. I, I initially I think I had a O line, and I I actually crossed out Josh Jones and put Josh Jones with uh the other whoever. I, I don't know, my notes are all crazy. I was trying to like decipher them a minute ago, but. Um, but yeah, Tampa Bay, I think is what I said, right? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but so I went with, uh, the LSU receiver, uh, Justin Jefferson for, Miami. okay. Cause I don't think they have, I can see that too. Cause they, I mean, I, I think, I think with Miami, I think that no pick goes wrong yeah. right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I mean, worst worst case scenario, they don't turn out like what you expect, and you're in the exact yeah. same spot you're in yeah. right now, right? It, you know, best case scenario, they turn out really well, and they turn out to be a stud mm-hmm. player, and 
you know. Yeah, because I think that they, you know, another step in the. In didn't the they? Um, who did they? Who who's their quarterback? Um, well, we're thinking Tua, right? So, uh, Tua. Or, I, I took or, Tua. You took uh, yeah, so Justin Herbert. Thinking Tua Herbert yeah. combo, right? So, um, it's just nerve wracking, man. Like, I think you got to have some sort of receivers. Like, I they don't have. Who do they even have? Yeah, that's another thing too. Is you, you draft you draft, it, there, there, there's kind of two two sides to this on the way you look at it. I feel like if if you if you take an old lineman, you're guaranteeing that you protect your young quarterback. So if you take two, if they take if they take two uh, at number five, which is what I'm thinking, I think they need to take an old lineman to protect him just because of the risk of the injury, right? Um, if they take who you're saying, which is Justin yeah. Herbert. I think at that point you've got to go receiver. He, you don't have the risk of the injury. Don't get me wrong; he can get hurt. Anybody can get hurt with these big dudes that play in the league. But I don't think I think that fear of injury kind of goes away, even though you know it's present. It's there. They can always get hurt, right? But like just due to not being any um, history of it happening per se with him then I think that what will happen is that fear will kind of go out of their mind and maybe they'd go more so towards the wide receiver because right now they don't really have anybody either at wide receiver. So how do you expect a rookie quarterback to develop as a professional quarterback with they, scrub got, receivers? Devontae Parker's good. Okay, they got they got one, I mean, one they, good I receiver. they have Albert Wilson as well. It's looking at. And then Alan Hearns. They ain't, they ain't nothing, man. They don't have – they have one good receiver. Right. Like, Devontae Parker is legit. Like he's a good receiver. He just had scrub yeah. thrown to him. <laughs> so. It fits magic, bro. But yeah. I wish. I yeah. Wish. But no, so you, who who are you saying with Miami? Are you gonna Justin go O line or receiver? You said receiver? Justin what was Jefferson, it? LSU. Justin Jefferson of L S U. All right, I got you down for that. Oh, it's my Miami. I'm glad to see that as we went along, our pick started changing up. All right. What you got for Vegas' second pick at 19? At number 19, um, I have them taking A.J. Terrell. I lost you. Um, I have you, – you got me back now? Um, I've got him taking AJ Terrell um, with the 19th pick. Yeah, beef up that secondary a little bit. It's funny I, I have him coming up quick. Uh, I think that I think that they they definitely could use some defensive help. Um, I just think that their I think their D line is hurting ever since they got rid of old uh, Khalil Mack. Um, I, mm-hmm. Terrell actually, so it's crazy. It's like Terrell was the other one that I was thinking. Um, I, I think just going off of maybe what John Gruden wants to do, um, thinking he's, he likes, he may like a Kinlaw type player. Um, just how he talks about Mm -hmm. those D linemen. And if Kinlaw falls this far, which I think he might because of his knee injuries, um, like his history of injuries, uh, I think that they're going to take Kinlaw at 19, but Terrell is a really good spot for him to go. And I think that those those two are really possible. Like I, I do like that pick a lot, actually. Okay. Like that's one that I'm con- like I was contemplating. Yeah, I, I think they. I agree. I think they. If if there is a good D lineman there available, like like a Derek Brown or a Ken Law or um, you know any of those guys somehow manage to slip that far, I, I think there's no question they're taking them. But based on what's going to be available by that point. I think that's who they get. But uh, who you got with Jacksonville? They got another another pick yeah, coming so up uh, next. Uh, they took the so, Rams. You got yeah, AJ so Terrell. They have, um, they have what's his name, or they don't have anything at corner. They got rid of uh, Jalen um, Ramsey. So um, I think that they take a corner. I think they take AJ Terrell. I think that AJ Terrell is top five corner in this draft. Um, but I think that him being on Clemson, getting a lot of, 
uh, exposure is really going to help him. Oh, shit. You there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? You good? Yep. Yeah, I, I can hear you. Skipping, sorry. <laughs> Technical difficulties. It could be mine, too. My my, my software has been giving me issues, too. So, ain't no telling, man. But bear with us, everybody, if you're, if you're listening to our picks right now. Oh, yeah, so I got AJ <laughs> Terrell at uh at twenty. Who you, you said you had uh okay who you have at twenty? At twenty, um with Jacksonville, um I'm gonna go secondary as well, but uh I don't have AJ Terrell on the board anymore. I got Grant Delpit from LSU, yeah. the safety. Um, I, t- I have them taking oh, him. I think he's gonna go, um at that Jacksonville spot. Same thing. I think they need secondary. Um, and I think that's that's gonna be their best option got, right there. What's his name from uh, so, played in Dallas? Then, uh, Barry Church. <clears throat> but yeah, they need they need help. Oh yeah, they need help. Yeah, oh, they need they lots of help Byron on Jones. the defensive side of the ball there. Oh no, Byron what's Jones up? went to Miami. Sorry, I don't know what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah he went Miami, to Miami. Right? Man. Yeah, dude. Uh, if if Miami plays their cards right, man. Dude, they they're gonna be back in in the in the talk before you know it, man. It, they got to play their cards right, and draft picks got to pan out, of course. But dude, they just with as much as they have to gain in the draft over the next two years. I I, I think I've been listening to Wesley too much because he he's been talking to me about the Dolphins. He's hyped about them, <laughs> but I mean it makes sense. So I think they can I think they can make some impact. Um. But yeah, we'll we'll move along. Next pick, number twenty one. Uh, it's currently with Philadelphia. Um, I this was the one that I had them trading up to San Francisco for. So I got San Fran in this one making a pick. Um, and which I'm looking at it now, and I'm not sure if it's going to make sense for them to do this, um, or not. Uh, but they traded. I have them trading down. They are going to take Brandon. I I can't. I'm going to pronounce this so wrong. Ayuk. Oh. The receiver yeah, from yeah, Arizona AFC State. Receiver. Yeah, man. You were yeah. Early. Um, I've got them taking him at number twenty-one. Um, which it, I'm kind of thinking about it. If they trade away the thirteen pick with receivers on the board, why not take a receiver at that point? Um, but I don't think. I think by the time I had them at thirteen, I want to. Yeah, I have Judy and C.D. Lamb getting picked bef- right before then. So there's not that rec- like a there's not a top top receiver like that on the board still whenever I traded it away. So I guess it makes a little bit more sense when they pick up some other round picks as well. Yeah. I like I like Who do you get for Philly though. I have them taking I have Philly sitting on the board. Um I was thinking about Ayuk. I was thinking about Philly taking Higgins. Um I think I don't think they like the Higgins model. I I think they like Ayuk. Uh but I'm 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 having them take uh completely off the board i think they're going to try to um build off this one uh i don't even know if that makes sense hold on a sec uh dude my notes are all jacked up but i'm gonna go with um go with o-line on here go with ezra cleveland ezra cleveland yeah, uh, I think that so. Nice, nice. You're you're never wrong with a six six three hundred pound dude, right? Um, that's legit. He, uh, I believe, he played at Boise mm-hmm. State. Um, Carson yep. Wentz is a, always a question mark when it comes to injury, and uh, they're they've got Jason Peters, who's constantly hurt. Um, but they they need another tackle, right? So, uh. You know, I actually don't like that pick, <laughs> but we'll, we'll roll with it. <laughs> I I, I kind of want to go with T okay. Higgins on that, so I'm gonna I'm gonna redact that one. Let's go with T Higgins. Now that I start thinking, about it. yeah, T I Higgins. Talking it out loud, and I was like, no, nah, okay. I'm not Yeah, T Higgins. Yeah, I like the T Higgins pick. Um, I like that that one. I think they need it. They, they need a receiver, um, which is why I had them trade up to get um. Yeah, well, well, let's go with T. Higgins. As I as I looked at my notes, I was like, I had some crazy chicken scratch that was like, it made a note next to it, like, like look at this one, and I never looked at it, so I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, no, nah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. So Philly T Higgins final yeah. answer. Um, I think that's a good pick too. Brandon Ayuk from right, Arizona State. Because yeah, the Sun Devil. Okay. His name is dumb. <laughs> and then no, number twenty-two. We're almost there. We got ten more picks to get us no. through this first round. Um, could you imagine if we did a mock draft for yeah, every single round? That. Jesus. No, thank you. Once I get past the first round, it would just yeah, be like, me guessing. Uh, but myself, Luis Perez, and wait, he can't get drafted. Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> Luis Perez can't get it. What? <laughs> guy's a national yeah. champion. All right, we got. But, all right, number twenty-two. We got Minnesota. They trade this. They got this pick in the trade when they sent Stefan Diggs to Buffalo. Um, number twenty-two. Who do you got them taking? I. With Minnesota, so I want the Cowboys to draft this guy, um, but I I know that they're gonna if Chasson's still on the board, they got to take Chasson. But um, his name's Gross uh, Matos, Penn State D uh, D lineman. Um, I think he's a locker room guy. I think he's a positive influence in his community type dude, but he's also really good. Um, and I think Minnesota embraces those types of players like the Adam Thielen's of the world and you know the guys that kind of come from you know look, tougher situations stuff like that and I, I really like Gross Matos D lineman because they got rolled and, and my reasoning is Everson Griffin leaving and um, them not having D line at all like I think that that's they've got Daniel Hunter and I think you have to compliment him gotcha I mean it makes sense yeah um I mean, I could see them going D line. Um, I don't have them going D line. I think, I think, um, I think they're going to replace the receiver they lost whenever they traded. I think they're going to take Justin Jefferson, uh, the receiver from LSU, with this pick. Um, it seems a little weird that they. I think maybe they had something going on with Stephon Diggs, and was, maybe just too expensive. Maybe that's what prompted the trade. But, like Mississippi, and yeah, DeAndre. and so you got, yeah. You got you to replace him. I think they got Justin Jefferson from LSU. Yeah, I think Justin Jefferson is kind of low key top five receiver in this in the draft, and I think that he's not getting as much love for whatever reason because I think that they think Burrow is the legit, but I think he's better than what people are saying he is. Um, we'll see. Like it makes sense. Like right, then you lose uh, you lose Stephon Diggs. He won he has a full contract, but he's complaining about not getting the ball. He's just a locker room headache. Let's go and get a. Uh, a cheap, um, essentially brand new. We can mold them how we want. Receiver, he can compliment Adam Thielen, and we can be happy in life, right? It makes sense. I mean, and why not do it with a really good receiver from LSU that is used to playing with a good quarterback? You know, but 100%. yeah, like I, I just 100%. think that they 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 may see that. For me personally, I think that the D line um, need is always bigger. I think that you can find like they found Adam Thielen mm-hmm. off the streets. Literally played at Minnesota State, uh, Minnesota or whatever the uh, Minnetonka or whatever the hell it's called. Um, <laughs> sorry, my Minnesota friends. Like I know, like that's right down the road, but you get my point. Um, I think it's Mankato, Minnesota State, Mankato. He literally played at a D two school and is top fifteen receiver in the league. And I think that they yep. thrive on that type of receiver. And I think that's why Stefan Diggs hit the road. So mm-hmm. I can see that too. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see the D line. You make a good point for the D line. Um, so we'll see. I mean, we'll just see at the, at the draft on what they end up doing because it's not going to happen. But we'll see. <laughs> yeah, this one is my favorite pick too, just because I didn't know what to do with it with oh, the next one. New England, but they're not number twenty three. They're, they're stingy and they're like. They're like the the old dude that his salary wasn't really high, but he saved all his money his whole life and didn't spend it on anything. That's the that's the patron. You know what I mean? Like, yes. They all drive the old beat up yeah, Toyota yeah. Camry. Wearing wearing sweatpants with some white New Balances that cost forty dollars. Forty dollars. They're in the Shoot. You're talking about fifty percent off at Kohl's. They're like nineteen ninety nine. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> they have grass stains on. Looking like the grill master every weekend with the jorts. 
in the fresh cut lawn. Their dad, essentially, is what we're just yeah. saying. So, yeah, it's they got rid of their team. team. You, you All really right, told me four years ago, hey, Bill Belichick and the Patriots are going to release. They're going to trade Tommy Brady or release Tommy Brady. They're not going to re-sign him, and they're going to trade Gronkowski. I said, you're high. Stop talking to me. But here we are. Here we are. We're in freaking quarantine. We ain't got shit to do. It's almost Friday, and Tom Brady's on the Bucks. Gronkowski on the Bucks. Yeah. And Julian Edelman's chilling like, what about me, bro? (laughs) It's a hell of a year, man. You have damn near World War Three. You then have uh, Australia yeah. damn near burns down. They Kobe Bryant. You died. have global pandemic. Kobe Bryant died before the global pandemic, but then the global pandemic oh, happened. No, this happened. which the, the pandemic happened right after right after Kobe died. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> um, and then you got you know Tom Brady released. By the Patriots, well, not re-signed for right? nothing. So he was a free agent, yeah. not re-signed, essentially. Yeah, yeah, not re-signed, not released, and then um, they trade the away fire Gronkowski fire for. Fire Who does? Yeah, yeah. I mean, part of me is wondering, like, did they get shafted well, on that trade or not? Because it's like he, 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 they had dead stock in him at that point because he wasn't going to do anything, he wasn't going to play, right? Yeah. So well, they get well, something well, out of him. So there's that part of it, but it's also Gronkowski. I feel like he could have got more. I think it was a good medium. I think the yeah, the yeah. I'm not mad with it. I'm not. I'm not. And the with Bucks it. want Gronkowski. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, I see it. All right. So it, the 23rd pick, New England Patriots. Who are they taking? <laughs> Is the old quarterback uh, Jordan Love. Hey, my boy, that's who I got too, buddy. Jordan yeah, Love. Think- one love. From Utah so State. this is one that I could see the Patriots trading up to get. But the, like I said, the Patriots don't like to spend a lot of money. Uh-huh. And I don't see a lot of needs for quarterbacks to that point. So I think they're going to sit there. Mm-hmm. And I think he played at Utah. Uh, Utah State, Utah sorry. State. The Utes, right? Um, uh, oh, now yeah, Utah yeah. is the Utes. Yeah. Utah State... Uh, red, right? I don't remember so, so which one Utah they are. State, uh, the Utah Red, uh, they're they're like purplish color, like a purple blue. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're I right. Think. I could be wrong. I think there could be two quarterbacks here. They could take this this uh, Stidham guy or whatever, but I think they're going to take Jordan Love. I think so too. I think Jordan Love. I think that is like. I think I think Bill Belichick is salivating over that guy right now i think he wants him and i i, I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to he trade up to get him um but i think but i also know belichick he he's strategic and thought out and i think that between him and robert Kraft, they're not gonna be moving up they're not gonna move up they're gonna sit patiently because they you you gotta know he's gonna fall i don't really know anybody else that's gonna take him in between now right. and then right you know I agree. um all right, so we got the same pick on number twenty three, number twenty four. All right, we got New Orleans. Uh, I have for New Orleans. I I feel like offensive side they're set, um, or at least for now. Um, I think they go defense line, get the edge rusher, go AJ Epineza yeah, kid, from right? Iowa. I could have put. I think, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I mispronounced his name, but uh, <laughs> I think I think he's going. I think he's okay. going to New Orleans. Um, I think I think he's he's a really good edge rusher, fast, quick. And he would, he would uh, and I just think I think Sam Jordan pretty well too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think that'll make that defensive front scary to deal with. So I think that's who they're taking. I'm going who you defense got? as well, but um, go the linebacker. Uh, they're he'll be sit be chilling with uh you know in, the, in that linebacker front with Demario Davis and they got to Cam Jordan on the D line. Um, I think they're gonna go with this uh, Kenneth Murray from Oklahoma, uh, linebacker. I think uh, okay. I think 
he's legit. Um, he played on a really good defense uh, with Oklahoma. Um, obviously a top three, top four college program. Um, he brings size. You know, he's six three, maybe six four, two fifty, two forty, whatever. Um, that's huge. So um, I think that. The D line is always the number one, but I think their D line is is still good enough to where it's not like a pressing need. I think that they really need another linebacker. But I like the S. I like the mm-hmm. S. Uh, Epinesa or whatever, however you say his name. I like that pick as well. <laughs> so um, you can't go wrong. With, you can't go wrong with defense in this in this spot. So yeah, I agree. 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 Um. All right. Uh, We are almost through the first round. People bear with us a little bit longer. Uh, We got just a couple more picks to make. Um, Up again, Minnesota. You're going to laugh at me because I I, I joked about this earlier, but um, go ahead. (laughs) No, no, man. Minnesota, uh, number 25 pick. You go ahead, buddy. I want to hear the joke. joke. (laughs) I just think it's dumb, my thought process. Who did you have them drafting? You had them drafting Jefferson, right? Before Minnesota? Um, yeah, I have them drafting Justin Jefferson at the number 22 spot. Okay. So never mind. I was thinking that you had them. Uh, shit. I'm off. Okay, never mind. No, we're good. Um, all right, so I had them taking defense prior to this, and I'm going to have them taking defense again. So, um we're gonna go with uh, this is kind of a toss up because there's a couple guys out there. Mm. I ha- so I have two names listed. I don't know who I want. Mm. I have one name listed, but I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm gonna go with Jeff <laughs> from TCU. Okay. Yeah, Minnesota. You led me. It was a good pick. Good pick. I think you're right, man. Uh, defense for sure. Uh, I think it's a toss up on who who they actually pick because, like you said, just a couple guys. Um, out of the guys that I had to choose from on my end, um, I picked Noah Igbinog. I don't know how to. It's I G B I N O G H E N E. He was the cornerback at Auburn. Really okay. good cornerback uh, at Auburn. Igbinogi. I have no clue how to pronounce yeah. that. That you guess as good as mine. I'm gonna be right. <laughs> yeah, he's from Auburn, though. Yeah, um, I think that's who they're gonna take. I mean, again, th- same thing. Toss up. Uh, there were like three guys on my list that I saw that I could possibly pick at this point. I pretty much just dropped a pin on yeah, one, like just because you can't. You could once you get to I feel like this point in the draft, you have three or four options at the There's position like, you're trying to get. You got, you got and the corner from from LSU, Fulton. You've got Trayvon Diggs from Alabama. You've mm-hmm. got J- uh, Jalen Johnson um, from Utah. You've got, uh, you know, uh, Xavier McKinney's safety, but he, you know, whatever. You got Gladney. You've got, um, like, literally, I'm just listing guys like that are like this, the same level. You know what I mean? Like, these dudes are mm-hmm. right there with yeah. The- yeah. A lot of options. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like Virginia's mm-hmm. Bryce Hall, like it just goes down. So, all right. Um, yeah. Number 26. Yeah. Got Miami again. Uh, hold on. I need to write. Uh, I put IG Auburn. <laughs> so, uh, I wouldn't pick that guy just because his name sucks. So, all right. <laughs> I, I'm curious to see what his last name looks like on a jersey. No, I'm... It's gonna it's gonna do a full like you know like you you know those like government seals that have the circle around like yeah. whatever it is, like that they stamp yeah. stuff with. It his his back of his jersey is gonna look like a government seal. It's gonna have his name around the outside, and it's gonna have his number right in the middle. <laughs> All right, so I got um for. So Miami, so I had Miami taking Jefferson earlier. So I think they're going to go and they're going to go defense. Mm-hmm. 
They're gonna take this Epinesa guy from Iowa. Okay. Epinesa. I think that's a good pick for him too. Beefs up their yeah. defense again. Um they lost Robert. I mm-hmm. Yeah. Um let's see. I'm I'm still I'm still kind of debating on this one on which on what I would like to see with them picking here. Um I could see them going with another um offensive lineman and I wish they would because it would leave somebody on the board that I really want them to leave on the board. Um because my Green Bay Packers are coming up and I'd love for them to get them. Um but that person is T. Higgins from Clemson. I think that he's gonna slide to this point. I think well, Miami's gonna take know, him at this point. Have T. Um on in the second and, round. Yeah, I can see that too. And the only reason why I can see so I'm kind of, I'm trying to debate if I want to keep my original pick or if I want to my original pick on this one is um where is it at? Sorry. Is Caesar Ruiz, the offensive lineman yeah. from Michigan. I have him yeah. sitting there. Um I'm trying to figure out if I want to that's who I originally put down, but I'm also sitting there and I'm taking into account what you were talking about earlier whenever I'd picked the O line earlier and you're like, yeah, well, whatever quarterback they get is going to need some tar- somebody to target. So I could see T Higgins yeah. being that person if they get their one O lineman versus yeah. two. Um, So I, th- I think I'm going to stick with my, my adjusted pick. I think they're going to take T Higgins here and get, get their, uh, their yeah. receiver. Oh, so I- that's, that's mine. Who, who you got? I'm going to get, you got them taking the Espinosa or Espin. Espinosa. Vanessa from what's I, uh what who did you end up taking again? T Higgins, you said final final answer. T Higgins from Clemson. Yep, yep. This is gonna be my final answer. I really hope they don't though, because I have a. I think that if T Higgins can fall to Green Bay, I think Green yeah, Bay takes him. I can see that. Hundred percent. That'd be as a Green Bay fan, I would jump for joy. Give you the G-rated version. Yeah. Jump for joy. Do G-rated. But... <laughs> <laughs> right, for twenty-seven uh, would be uh, Seattle. Seattle, Seattle, Seattle. Um, I think they're gonna go um, defense here. Um, I think they need to work on their defense to get back to kind of like that. They haven't been the same since yeah. Legion of Boom. So uh, I think they, I think they're gonna take Marlon Davidson, the defensive lineman from Auburn. Davidson. 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 But you got. So I think defense as well. Um, I just think uh, they need a secondary help. Um, pretty bad. Uh, I was I was struggling between Xavier McKinney and Delpit. Um, and I think Xavier McKinney is the, the, the good look for them. So I think they're going to take Xavier McKinney. Um, I think that, yeah, they're getting rid of Jadavian Clowney. They may re-sign him. We still don't know. Um, they've got Bobby Wagner in the middle. He's a freaking stud. And I think if you put some top cover for them, I think that, um, that that defense can kind of get back to where it was. The problem is I think that they need to not try to get back to where they were and try to move forward into a new type of defense or make their own identity. Cause I think that's where people go wrong. So. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think either way they can go right with any type yeah, of defensive I, pick, but they, they, could, go, they, could, could, they could go completely yeah. right with an O-line pick as well. Yeah, um, I think they need some O-line help mm-hmm. as well, but that uh the receiving core with DK mm-hmm. Met- Metcalf and uh um oh, what's his name I just blanked out number fifteen I can't think of his name who's the other guy the receiver oh. on Seattle uh, yeah Tyler, Tyler Lockett. Lockett sorry Tyler Lockett and uh and DK Metcalf I think that's a legit um and they got Greg, Greg Olson mm-hmm. yeah I think. I think they just did that. Yeah, I think they just picked up Greg Olson. So, 
real quick. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot cool. There's a lot of good guys like this Justin and uh, Madubu Madubike or something. I think that he's he's legit. We'll see. Um, and then the guy you're talking about, Davidson. Um, I think it could be interesting. Um, all right, so 28, Baltimore. Who you got? Go Baltimore. Um, I have them uh, beefing up their defense a little bit. Um, their their offense, I think, is plenty fine right now where it's at. Um, I have them taking Kenneth Murray, the linebacker from Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah, I, I like him. I guess I like that pick a lot. Have somebody hanging. He I believe he plays uh, middle linebacker a lot, so I think I think he'll add a. He he. From what I understand, he he's he's a good linebacker, and he also provides decent pass coverage yeah, as a so linebacker he, as well. Yeah. So, so I think a, I think that's what be, I was talking about earlier is why I thought he would be good for New Orleans because um, him and Demario Davis were really good together. But um, it's perfect. Like <clears throat> it's it's funny you say that uh, you had Kenneth Murray because I have a, a linebacker as well for them. Um, I think that they're so stacked on offense. Um, they they maybe could use another receiver, but they don't mm-hmm. pass that much. So I'm going with Patrick Queen from LSU. I, I thought about him too. I, it was a toss up like between fast, him as well. He's a fast I, I linebacker, thought about him. and I think that that's the type of linebacker they need. You know, with uh, mm-hmm. Earl Thomas, yeah, I can back see that. There, they they could cover some cover some ground. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, twenty nine. We got Tennessee coming up. Um, they they made the big move in the offseason, paid um, Tannehill a lot of money. So I'm assuming they're probably out of the quarterback discussion. Um, who do you who do you have them going with? Uh, so this one this one's tough because a lot of hey, you cut out on me a little um, bit, and they run the ball so damn much. They're spending like I don't know if they need another receiver. They got uh, AJ Brown's legit. Um, they maybe need a tight end. I think they'll wait. Yo, AJ, wait you there? The tight end to, to drop. I think they'll go with uh, a D lineman. And um, hey, can you do me a favor and start over yeah. on your on your pick yeah. for Tennessee? All right. Cool. Uh, I think for this one, I think the um, I think they don't need a receiver. I mean, they 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 can always use a receiver help. Um, AJ Brown's legit. Um, they need a tight end as well, but I think they can get him in the later round, maybe the second round. Um, but D line, I think, is a spot for them. Um, and I think mm-hmm. uh, D lineman from TCU, uh, Ross uh, Blacklock. Um, I think that's his name. Is it Blaylock or? Black- <laughs> 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 that's his name. Uh, <laughs> I'm not laughing at his name. I promise. It's all something over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm good. I'm good. I'm You're good. killing me, man. My immature moment. Yo, we we'll just say we we'll just say B. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, you're... Ross. Either, it's Ross Blacklock or Ross Blaylock. I don't know his name, Blacklock. but uh, I, I I hope it's Blacklock. I hope it's Blacklock. If it's not, he needs to change it. <laughs> anyway, but uh, anyways, moving on. Lineman. I agree. I think he's never runs out of energy. Um. He's not as strong as you probably like, but I think that he adds an element to that defense that they can keep getting better. And, and with a deep, with an offense like that, um, keeping them off the field and having mm-hmm. a good defense is really important. So um, uh, they got to score somehow, and I don't think Tannehill is going to get it done. And um, I think Derrick Henry uh, can only do so much. So I think you need to boost that defense, and uh, I think that's the guy for mm-hmm. him. So who do you got at 29? Yeah, I, th- I think that's a good pick, man. Uh, defensive lineman, uh, like you were saying, uh, they're probably not going to put up a whole lot of points on offense. You want to keep the other offenses off the f- field as you know much as possible and kind of control the the tempo of the game with Derrick Henry there. 
Um, I don't have them going defense line. I think I could very well see it happening though. You make a very good like case for it. Um, I think they're gonna go O line. I think they're taking Ezra Cleveland from Boise State. I still got him on the board on my end, so I think they're gonna go O line. Uh, Ezra yep, yep, Cleveland okay. from Boise State, the O lineman. I think they're gonna take him one help protect Tannehill. They just paid him a lot of money. Two, um, I think I think you if you if you can improve. I think I think the O line's already pretty good in Tennessee. Correct me if I'm wrong. I could be misspeaking there. Um, but if you take that offensive line to a whole nother level, imagine how good Derrick Henry would be. If he's not having to truck people at the line of scrimmage, but rather you know three or four lines or three or four yards past the line of scrimmage, I mean he's gonna be. They're gonna be able to control that run game even better. So I got I got them taking the uh, O lineman yeah, there. I like it. Um... Yeah, I still have Cleveland on the board too. I initially didn't. I actually had to make a change. So yeah, good call. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like yeah. Cleveland. I think he's a really good O lineman. Um, I, you know, I could really, I could very well see Tennessee being like, "Hey, we need to boost it." The Cowboys did it. Um, you know, they just kept picking new O linemen. Um, and O lineman just an injury away from not being able to play, and, and you having a, a scrub back there. So. Um, I think that that's perfect, especially with the way that they run their offense. You know mm. what I mean? So, yeah, I yeah. agree. Um, all right, number thirty. Yeah, my boys, the Green Bay Packers. What do you uh, think? I think they need a receiver. Um, I think that they're probably hoping that some of these guys fall. Um, I don't think they would take a T. Higgins. So there's like there's like three receivers that I really like. Mm-hmm. Um. And I think they're going to take this Ayula from uh, Arizona State. Um, I haven't heard anything about it, but I think it's just kind of the hand they're going to be dealt. Um, another another couple mm-hmm. names that for your for your essay is Chenault. I think he's good. Um, Jalen Rager from TCU. I think he's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mims from Baylor. I think he's also really good. Um, T. Higgins is going to be sitting there. And then uh, there's one other guy. Um, and Ayuk, right? So um, I think that they can't go wrong. I think that there's so many receivers that it's almost like kind of scary mm-hmm. to draft a receiver at that point because you're like, man, there's so many more. And there's this guy from USC, Pittman. That was the other guy, sorry. Um, mm-hmm. I think that Green Bay m- needs a receiver. But I don't know if – is it worth drafting – you know, there's there's still, like, D linemen available and there's still O linemen available. Do I take, uh, you know, say an Epineza guy stays – is still available or, a um, you know, a uh, Ruiz, like a Cesar Ruiz from Michigan, is he still available? Do I take that guy or do I take a receiver that I could possibly get in the second round? You know what I mean? So I haven't taken Ayula, but we'll see – We'll see what happens, right? Yeah, um, I mean, you definitely make a good point for you know with the with the depth of the receivers in this class on who they should take. Um, I was hoping that T. Higgins would fall down to here, but like I said, I don't think he will. Um, I know a lot of people are projecting him too, but I, I think Miami's going to take him there um, at some point in the in the draft um, in the first round. And that's going to be before Green Bay. Um, if T. Higgins does fall, then you know I'd definitely say him. Um, but I think I think they are going to go receiver. The only other position I could really see them going with right now, if it was not a receiver, would be an offensive lineman. Um, you mentioned the defense. I, I we're pretty pretty good set on defense. I would say like maybe like a middle linebacker we would need to, you know, sign just because. Um, I believe we left, lost Martinez in the off season. I want to say, and also it could always just be better in the middle there. Um, secondary, I mean, we're pretty much set on you know secondary right now. We got um, you know Jari Alexander, Kevin King, uh, Darnell Savage, uh, Amos that we got from Chicago in the off season last year. So um, I think they're good on defense. You got the Smith Smith guy, they're not brothers, but they call them the Smith Bros. Um, the, as the edge rusher, so I think I think they're pretty well rounded on the defensive side. They didn't always play like it last year, but because th- they played about run in the middle. But I think that they're 
pretty well staffed on that. I, I think um, with T. Higgins being off the board, I, th- I think it's going to be Jalen Rager. Um, I think that's who they're going to take. I think he fits the style of the offense that the the Packers run. Um, he eats up the yards after catch, um, which is something that Rodgers likes to do. He likes to hit those you know quick slants, those little out routes, things like that, and eat up yards after catch. I mean, he'll throw bombs. Don't get me wrong. He'll he'll test the defense deep throughout the game, um, but he only does that you know every you know few plays in the meantime it's just short quick strikes and then he stretches them out short quick strikes stretch them out i think jalen rager will succeed in that you know quick strike game and just eat up the yards after catch so that's who i got jalen rager from uh, I, I, uh, tcu so that's why i i think that Ayuk. i'm sorry i said Ayula, but Ayuk is uh he's mm-hmm. the dynamic piece that aaron, aaron Rodgers is looking for he's got Devonte adams on the one side but i think that he's been missing that dynamic dude you know like like Devonte adams is legit but he can only mm-hmm. do so much and but i, I like john rager i think john rager is going to be a good player um but can you get john rager in the second round probably you know and, and it's just you got to balance that. yeah like it, yeah you probably can but the problem is is they got to wait all the way right. until the end and of the second round again, right? so you gotta you gotta wait for him to pass through 30 teams to trade again. up in the second round than is the third round that's true. That's true as well. Um, 31. Yeah. We got uh, San Fran. San Fran. So I got uh, San Francisco taking Ezra Cleveland at this spot. Okay. Yep. Uh, I don't know if it, I don't know if it will fall as far. Um, depending on how people want to take O linemen. But. Uh, I think San Francisco mm-hmm. could utilize the way that they they run that zone offense, that zone read, not zone read. I'm sorry, no running power mm-hmm. op, power run, zone power, whatever the hell it's called. Yeah. Um, the West Coast offense, sure. you know, they're they're moving their linemen out out in the blocking and out in space blocking and that kind of thing. So I think that you know you can never go wrong with O line. Um, uh, you know, yeah, that's where I'm that's where I'm looking at, and I don't think that the talent level that they're looking at. So since I have them drafting Judy, I don't know if they would go with a receiver, but if they don't draft Judy, they could go for a receiver at this point in the draft. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't think, I don't think they have a bad pick here, regardless of what they pick, just because they don't have very many holes to plug right now. Um, I got them taking Jalen Johnson, the quarterback or quarterback, the corner yep. back from Utah. I like Jalen Johnson. Mhm. And then, um, only because I figured, you know, why not defense you for him? Twenty five um, for me as Jalen Johnson, or did you have it as somebody else from Minnesota? Twenty five. Okay. Uh, glad so me. I, I, that was the one that I. I remember having Johnson. Sorry, that's just my. Uh huh. Yeah, no, 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 no. You got Gladney there. Um, now we got the final, final pick: Super Bowl winners, Kansas City Chiefs. Um, who do you think they're taking? Uh, I'm going with Jalen Johnson. Yeah, they need second okay. really bad. I. I- I'm balancing that mm-hmm. that or or Delpit, like one of those two guys. Um, yeah. Hold on. Or even Diggs. Like, oh man, Trayvon Diggs. I don't know. Um, let's go with Jalen Johnson. Okay, got you there, Jalen Johnson, Kansas City. Um, I really didn't know who to pick for Kansas City. I. I I see where they do need the help on their secondary. I, th- I think they need the help on defense. Their secondary um, trash. However, their secondary is so what's trash. Up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, the defense is not where you want it to be. Um, I still don't think they go defense. Um, I think they're going to add on to their offense. I think they're going to they're gonna take the only running back of the first round this draft. I think they're going to take DeAndre yeah. Swift from Georgia. You know, it's – he he's really good. Add another add another element to their really game. 
And, um, you know. but for me, like, I don't think he's the best running back in the draft, but everybody else does. I like Jonathan Taylor a lot. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I like Jonathan Taylor too. I almost had Baltimore take yeah. Jonathan Taylor at the 20, I think it was 28 spot. Um, but I was just like, ah, they really don't need the offense right now. Uh, be, they I will eventually just not right now. But they've also got some good. They've got some good running backs in the pipeline oh, too yeah. right now. So cool, man. But we got the mock draft done, man. Uh, we got all of our picks. Um, you know, everybody that's been tuning in, this has probably been our longest episode yet. So we enjoy. We glad that you you know you hung tight through the full two hours. Um, your mock draft picks. If you're listening, you want to do one, uh, drop it into you know, the comments on wherever you're watching this at and, uh, or listening to this at, um, or on our Facebook page or wherever, um, drop the, drop your, you know, mock draft and, you know, compare with us yeah, and we'll go be, from there. Uh, we'll be watching. So appreciate we'll be watching the draft there. tomorrow. Um, probably, you know, hanging out, drinking a couple of beers, mm-hmm. watch it. And, uh, we'll be, you know, updating you okay. as our favorite teams go by with the draft. Um, on the Facebook, like me yep. and the Cowboys, obviously, and and Dylan with the Green Bay Packers, um, and then like we said, we'll we'll have this uh this wager going for um who uh, yep. who wins um and something to to look forward to for us is uh, obviously the next two episodes of uh, the Last Dance on Sunday three and four. Um, I'm always looking forward to that mm-hmm. since there aren't really sports, we can review something. And uh, if you have any suggestions, comments, concerns, let us know on any of the social media platforms. So we we uh, have our podcast on all things podcasts. Um, we have it on Spotify. We have it on Apple Podcasts. We have it on Google Podcasts. We have it on um, YouTube. And we'll post those links on Facebook as well. Um, but whatever, whatever uh, outlet you use, make sure you subscribe, comment, like it, do all those things. Um, you know, we're obviously not in this for money. We're in this for just, just to, to be able to get a good conversation going, talk about sports, BS a little bit and, and give a, give y'all our unprofessional professional opinion. So, um, I hope y'all, uh, continue to listen to us and hope you don't get turned off by this two hours, but we try to keep it within an hour and two hours and uh, we'll, we'll try to get some more guests on going mm-hmm. forward as well. So got any last questions? Most definitely. Uh, no, I mean, if you tuned in for the two full two hours, you know, we definitely appreciate it. All the support. I uh, definitely don't like to go that long, but just had a lot of content to cover with the draft coming up. I want to make sure we give our full in-depth, uh, review and predictions, um, that are probably going to be very off. Um, but we, we hope you enjoyed listening to them. Um, and like AJ was saying, man, we just do it for fun. So, uh, you know, share us around. If you like listening to us, you know, share us with your friends that, enjoy listening to uh podcasts about sports and you know like to just kind of bs around a little bit Hell yeah you know? um as always you know we appreciate y'all tuning in um you know until till next time much love yep. bs nation later <laughs>